Thank you. All right. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another night of high school football in Northwest Georgia. We're streaming live on YouTube, R Swiger One. Go to YouTube, search R Swiger One, and you will find tonight's broadcast that's being streamed live for Darlington as well as anyone who wants to watch tonight's game. We're not on the radio yet on WLAQ. WLAQ is finishing up the Braves, and if you're a Braves fan, say go Braves at uh, top of the ninth, two outs, tying run at the plate, Braves up three to nothing. So, uh, big game for that if you're an Atlanta Braves fan. But here we are at uh, Darlington's. Chris Hunter Stadium, Jerry Sharp Field at Chris Hunter Stadium for tonight's 6 AA region game between 6A region game uh, between the Darlington Tigers and the Christian Heritage Lions and Matt, everything thus far has been playing hard playing an opponent that you've got to beat but tonight uh, we go into the second half of the season against the Christian Heritage Lions they're very good, giving up only five points per game, and they're scoring 32 points a game, and uh, they're very physical. They're a younger team. Five, their five leading tacklers are underclassmen, and their leading rusher, Gage Leonard, is a sophomore, already has a 270-yard rushing game and a 173-yard rushing game. So these guys are good. Absolutely they are, Steve. And one of the things that just really jumps off the page about this team is the fact that the juniors and seniors that are on this team, their first couple of years were really rough. I know in 2016 that they only won one game. 2017 they won two. Last year they went seven and four though, and made the playoffs. And so this has been a squad that's been growing maturity throughout the last few years, growing confidence. And this is going to be a major test for the Darlington Tigers. How big of a test I think remains to be seen. But this is the beginning of a really tough stretch where you have again Christian Heritage, you have Tryon, Bowden, North Cobb Christian. A lot of tough games on the slate, so it's time to get out there and, and get it done and weather the storm. Well, you have to do that, and uh, if you're Darlington, you're looking at the fact that you've gone four, uh, five and zero. Oh, you're two and zero oh in the region. You play six region games. You got a game tonight, and then an off week to kind of heal up. But this is the game that you've got to win if you're Darlington. It's going to be Colin Rogers coming out running the football, and Colin is second in the area with 570 yards, uh, and uh, he is really the workhorse for the Darlington ground game. But this is the first time in a long time that Darlington has had the passing threat that we have in Griffin Brewster. He's thrown nine touchdown passes, Matt, and he has not thrown an interception. Absolutely, Steve. And, you know, talking about Colin Rogers, the stat on him last week, he had up 111 yards in that game, but they only ran him, I think, 11 or 12 times in the game. And that's so important because last year they had a lot of games where they had to run him. 30 times and this year they have so many different things they can do on offense that they still utilize him a lot in their offense he is a major part of what they do but they give him a little bit of rest from time to time and that is so important in this situation one of the things that makes this Darlington team so special is because of all the different guys they can distribute the football to well that is a big thing and Griffin Brewster has been able to distribute the ball to so many guys this year Tristan Wright Tristan Wright leads the area in receiving yardage and he's got three of the nine touchdown passes Patrick Shelley the sophomore he's really come into his own this year and he gives Darlington uh, a, a dual threat with Tristan Wright on the other side and then of course uh, you've got several other players like you've got Gil Maurer and you've got Hampton Watkins uh, you've got Tyler Watkins who will come in at times uh, you've got a, 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 an entire group of players that come in and can they can spread that ball around so Darlington has a multifaceted attack right now and this is going to be a huge huge factor in tonight's game especially with the heat the heat in Index right now is at least 98 down here at Chris Hunter Stadium, which you don't expect on October the 4th gets cool tomorrow. 
No question, Steve. And that's another factor. I mean, you obviously have to be prepared for this game in terms of your game plan and how well you have got out there and prepared for this football team in terms of the X's and O's. But with the major heat wave that we still have going on right now, you also have to be prepared in terms of your hydration and how you prepared in that way. And so that'll be something that both teams really have to have had to have already taken care of at this point. Well, and you know, Matt, both teams are in single A. Neither team has a lot of depth. Both teams have about 38 players on their rosters. Uh, injuries for Darlington, we see four players down on the sideline right now, and that doesn't uh, include Carson Swiger, who is out. And uh, so for Christian Heritage, they've got about the same number of players. Darlington has about 450 students that were in the upper school as part of the GHSA classification numbers. Christian Heritage had 153. I think they're now up to about... Um, they're up to about 180 right now in their upper school. But, uh, you know, the Lions, they're, they're going to come out and they're going to hit us. They're going to hit us hard. Last year was a very, very physical game. Uh, Tate Ratledge, um, Tate Ratledge just controlled that game. But it was a very, very physical game. Christian Heritage uh, lost the game 24 to 21. Darlington had a touchdown pass from Frank Manning to Casey Gunn with 7:25 left to play in the football game. But Christian Heritage started the score, and if you recall, with an interception for a touchdown. And then Roth Wilcox, who we really miss, you know, he graduated. But Roth Wilcox on a kickoff return for a touchdown. It got Darlington going, and it was a very physical game. And I expect the same thing tonight from the Lions. Absolutely, Steve. And we are just about to be joining along with our radio broadcast as well. I can hear in the studio right now they are playing the intro. And so with that said, Steve... We're now on the radio. Well, we're, we're glad to have you on the radio tonight with us as well as on the live stream. Captains are out on the field. We are about three and a half to four minutes before the start of tonight's football game. WLAQ1410.com can be uh, accessed to listen to tonight's broadcast on the radio. You also can use the TuneIn app. We're glad to have everybody with us tonight here at Chris Hunter Stadium. As we've been talking about the game, this is a big region 6A matchup. Darlington, Christian Heritage, both undefeated in the region. Whoever wins this game really has uh, is in the driver's seat from the standpoint of these two teams. And, of course, Bowden. Bowden is undefeated in the region, so uh, Darlington will end up playing Bowden later. North Cobb Christian lost to Bowden last, uh, last week, and they won the region last year. So there are a lot of games left, but tonight, if the Darlington Tigers can win tonight's football game, then the Tigers put themselves in a position going into an off week of being able to heal up and get ready for a three-game stretch to end the region's regular season. No question, Steve. And when we, we've seen Darlington play every game this year, and everybody knows that this is a special team and there's a sense that some special things can happen throughout the season and this is one of those games where you feel like this is going to be a tough matchup even though you probably feel like Darlington's the better team they're going to have to take care of the football they're going to have to play penalty free and those two things if they can do that and play sound mental, sound fundamental football throughout the entire night for four quarters I think they'll come out on top but they have to do those things yes and one final thing before we mention who the captains are and go to the broadcast for the game that's just just about to start, Matt, is special teams. I don't know about special teams for Christian Heritage, but I do know that Darlington's special teams have been superb. Brent, uh, Brinson Sumner, perfect on his PATs, and uh, he can really, really be a weapon on long field goals. And then, of course, you've got Tate Ratledge punting the football. Tristan Wright and Patrick Shelley returning kicks as a special teams focus Darlington's done very well this year no question about it and I can tell you that Joseph Dixon is the kicker that handles extra points and field goals for of course the visiting Christian Heritage team and he was six for six against Mount Zion in their last game that was also their last opponent they were off last week so it would appear that they also have some pretty good special teams play as well so this is one of those matchups that kind of makes you a little bit nervous but gets you excited because it's an opportunity to show what you have Yes, and uh, our captains, uh, Christian Heritage, Evan Lester, Solomon Locke, 
Mitchell Herndon, Gage Leonard, the uh, the sophomore running back who is outstanding. Darlington has to contain him tonight. And then for Darlington, Aiden Langford, Kobe Nadu, Tate Ratledge, and Mason McKenzie. Number five, Darlington will be kicking off to Christian Heritage. They will be going right to left on your radio screen, radio dial. Uh, Brinson Sumner teeing it up for the Tigers. We're about to have high school football. Buckle your chin straps, ladies and gentlemen. Toe meets leather. It's going to be a high end over end kick. Going to come down to a man at the six on the far side. He's running straight up field, and he's got some block, and there's a flag down on the play. He's down at the 29, Matt. Watch the flag. Yeah, he ran straight forward up the sidelines, got a pretty decent return, and we'll see what this flag's about. Big night here at Chris Hunter Stadium. Fox 5 is here for the game of the week. The fans voted and have spoken, and Christian Heritage in Darlington has everybody's attention, Steve. And this was one of the top ten games in GHSA High School News newsletter that comes out every morning, and yesterday this was listed as one of the top ten games that will be played tonight in the state of Georgia. And uh, we are getting a mark off against Darlington uh, and uh, this is a big penalty to start the game as personal foul against Darlington so Christian Heritage will begin in good field position at the 42 yard line of the Tigers on the far hash mark Christian Heritage the Lions gold and red are their colors and they have white jerseys white pants gold helmets with CH and they are uh, in a spread formation and their quarterback throws the ball complete to a man out here on a little bubble screen. Darlington wraps him up after a gain of about three mad. It's hard to see their numbers. Their quarterback, is that Christian Thomas? Yes, sir, it is. All right, Christian Thomas quarterbacking for Christian Heritage. He completes his first pass of the night, second and seven for the Lions on the near hash mark. And they will run a spread offense like most teams do now. They're going to have two men over on the near side, two wide outs to the far side. Darlington with a top safety over the top and uh, complete on a little bubble screen here. And the man's going to be run out of bounds. That's the second pass completion of the night for the Lions and I think they've got a first down. Let's see where they mark it. Yeah, that was Evan Lester and that's going to be one of the favorite targets for the quarterback Christian Thomas. And again, they do have some young players on this team, including their quarterback. He's just a sophomore, but he's already thrown two complete passes in this many plays. And so they're starting to get him a little bit of rhythm here early in the game. All right, Thomas, two for two. He's a sophomore. As I said before, this is a, a young team. Ti Tigers lead this series six games to zero with a 24-21 victory last year. Uh, but Christian Heritage, uh, they have really, really played well this year. They are averaging 32 points a game on offense. Then this is going to be a I formation. And now there's a whistle blown. Let's see uh, what's going on here. I think that uh, the receiver over here, Matt, has an equipment problem. Or maybe he's got an injury with his hand. Well, they're bringing another one onto the field right now, Braden Johnson, a junior. And now they're lined up and ready to roll. Different. Uh, well, same formation. Yeah, it's an I formation. Power eye formation with one tight end, two wide outs to the far side. They're going to hand off to the fullback, and there's nothing there, Matt, and he is going to be taken by Luke Lewis, and uh, that's Colin Rogers helping there, and they push him back, and that's going to be a loss of about two, second and 12 for the Lions. Gage Leonard, the ball carrier there, and of course the first two plays we saw some screen passes out here into the flat. This time they try to run it at that big defensive, big physical defensive line of the Darlington Tigers. That's a tough thing to do, Steve. It is, and DJ Johnson comes in to add some meat to the defensive line for the Darlington Tigers with Lewis, Brock, Ratledge, and now Johnson in down positions. Quarterback's rolling to his right. He's going to throw the ball complete to a man who gets shoved out of bounds close to the first down marker, Matt. I think it's going to be third and about one. Yeah, that was Evan Lester. He was one of the receivers of touchdown passes that they had in the game against Mount Zion. And obviously he's got a lot of chemistry with Christian Thomas. They've thrown a couple of nice balls to him already, and that was a good play. All right, it's going to be third down and about one. 
for the Lions at the 39-yard line of Darlington. Early in the football game, if you're just joining us, 10-20 to play here in the first quarter. Matt, I'm presuming the Braves did hang on to win that game tonight. Everybody was holding their breath when they brought Melanson in, and he created a jam, but luckily he was able to get out of it. All right. Three to nothing final. All right, and that's a handoff to the fullback, and he was stopped at the line of scrimmage, but Matt, he actually got forward enough for the first down. It'll be another first down for the Lions. Absolutely, and this is one of those teams, Steve, that's going to come into an environment like this on television, and they're not phased by it. They look very comfortable out there on offense, and they're doing a lot of different things, fairly simple type stuff, but effective so far, and they're getting first downs and moving the chains. All right, first and 10 for the Lions. Uh, they're on the march, their first possession of the night, going right to left. Uh, if you are just joining us, they're headed toward the north end zone where the concession stand is. Darlington and the Lions are both undefeated in the region. Quarterback in a shotgun, Thomas, he takes the ball. He's rolling to his left. He escapes a tackle, and that actually was not Thomas. Um, that was a wildcat formation, and the runner gets down to about the 30-yard line, and he gained about seven. That was Evan Lester, Steve, and that's just another example of this team trying to get the ball into their athletes' hands that they know can help them move the football, and it was an effective play. I'm not usually the biggest um, fan of the, the Wildcat, but it certainly worked there. It did. Second down and three for the Lions. They're marching. The ball is about four yards inside the near hash at the 30-yard line. Darlington trying to keep the Lions out of scoring position here in the early going. I formation. The quarterback sidesteps somebody. He looked like he was going to try to pitch the ball, Matt. He just sidestepped a tackler, and he got down to the 24 for a first down. Yeah, they picked up a few first downs, just a methodical drive here, eating up some clock, and this is a good-looking football team, so let's see if Darlington can pin their ears back now that they're down inside the 25 and get a stop. First and 10 for the Lions at the 24-yard line early in the football game if you're just joining us. Hot, humid night before cool weather arrives later this weekend, and hopefully we won't have any more temperatures in the 90s. Uh, very seldom do we go to the sixth game of the season with these kinds of temperatures. If we do, I'm moving. <laughs> Christian Thomas, he's going to throw the ball complete to a man on the bubble screen, almost tipped backwards by uh, Tate Ratledge over there, but it was complete, and he gets it down to the 20. It's going to be a gain of about four for the Lions. And that was Evan Lester again, and you're right, Steve, that ball was tipped by one of the Darlington defenders, so that was great awareness by the wide receiver to, to be able to make that grab and another pretty good play there for Christian Heritage. The Lions have done a good job of mixing it up. Coach Jay Pogue, and he's in his fourth season as the head coach of the Lions. And uh, they had a winning season last year, went to the playoffs. But Darlington took the air out of their sails, and they struggled toward the end of the season, and they're trying to get payback here. Second down and six at the 20 of the Tigers. Two, three wide outs to this side. Quarterback's looking to the far side. He completes it to a man who's going to be in for a touchdown. And that's a uh, pass from Christian Thomas to, and I can't see the Evan number. Lester, and that's again. Evan Lester. So that's going to be a 20-yard touchdown pass from Thomas to Lester. And the Lions methodically moved down the field in their first possession. It was a 58-yard touchdown drive. And uh, they moved it down the field, made it look easy. And here's their kicker, Steve, and, and, and he was 6-for-6 six six in their last game on extra points. All right, here is the snap. The ball is down. It's up, and it's through. And so the Lions go up 7 to nothing. So the 7.27 to play here in the first quarter. Christian Heritage, 7 Darlington, nothing. We're going to go to WLAQ for a 30-second break, and then we'll be right back. the stream.
Colin Rogers deep for the Tigers. The Lions move right down the field, go up 7 to nothing. Matt, I'm having a little bit of a difficult time seeing the numbers there for the Lions, and the kicker, I'm presuming, is the one who kicked the extra point there. Joseph Dixon is his name, yes, sir. All right, Dixon about ready to kick off for the Lions. Darlington's first possession of the evening coming up here. Dixon, here he goes, toe meets leather. This is going to be a line drive kick that goes straight to one of the up men. I don't know who that is, Matt, but that was a honeymoon bakery icing on the cake. Play of the game. Uh, number 16 for the Darlington Tigers, Jackson Norris. He just caught that ball that was just kicked straight to him and fell on it and uh, cuddled that ball under his belly, and the Tigers will scrimmage from their own 47. Well, that was a great play by Jackson Norris. Yeah, I reckon Christian Heritage was trying to catch Darlington sleeping, and they didn't, and that is definitely a feather in the Darlington Tigers' cap to have that awareness there and make a good play, and now they got a short field. All right. Christian Heritage with two deep safeties. Their linebackers are playing close. Four down linemen. Griffin Brewster, flea flicker. They got a man running down the far sideline. Patrick Chalet! Incomplete. Holy cow. He got past the defender. There were three Christian Heritage defenders over there. And the ball was just short and he had to stop otherwise he's got a touchdown and this game's tied i tell you what steve the flea flicker it's still one of my favorite plays in football when it's executed to a t it's a thing of beauty to watch and that time it just didn't happen but uh, it was close to being a big play there on first down second and ten for darlington at their own 47 the Lions lead seven to nothing they're moving people around Griffin Brewster rolling to his right. He's going to throw complete to Hampton Watkins. And Hampton Watkins takes a huge shot. He hangs on to the ball. It's going to be a gain of about six. And the Tigers will have a third down. But, you know, in uh, college, that game would be shown again or looked at because it was an elbow straight to the helmet, straight to the face of Hampton Watkins. There's no, there's no question that Hampton Watkins is seeing stars after that. And this Christian Heritage team, they're physical. They're going to hit you. All right. They're bringing up their linebacker. Seven men in the box. Christian Heritage up seven to nothing. Brewster looking over to get it. the play. And there's going to be some kind of change from what they originally talked about doing. And the Lions are playing two deep safeties over the top. And now the Darlington Tigers, they uh, take enough time to where they are going to be penalized for illegal procedure. The umpire threw the flag, and then he was pointing at somebody. So now instead of a third down and about four, you've got third and nine. Yeah, that's a tough situation. And, you know, we talked in our very brief pregame about how mistake-free football, very important against a team like this. All right, third and nine for Darlington. 6.21 to play here in the first quarter. Griffin Brewster, and he is flush from the pocket. Now he's throwing the ball incomplete. That ball was uh, almost thrown past the line of scrimmage. Hampton Watkins couldn't reel it in, and the Tigers are going to have a fourth and nine. Very costly penalty for Darlington. It was, Steve, and I tell you what, I was a little bit surprised that Griffin threw it right there because it was clear that nobody was ready for that pass, and that almost became a disaster. I think in that situation, you may have just taken the sack. All right, and the Lions, they are going to have two men deep. Uh, one of those men is Braden Johnson. He's on this side. I can't make out the number on the other side. Tate Rattledge with a high, high kick, and it's going to come down to a man at the 17 who calls for a fair catch. Is that Evan Lester? I over believe there? it was. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, they have gold numerals on their white jerseys, and these 65-year-old eyes <laughs> are having a little difficulty seeing them across the field there. So uh, thankful to have the uh, younger eyes of Matt Davis up here and uh, my grandson York is up here helping us with stats tonight our executive producer is back so well so we're gonna have an easier time keeping up with stuff tonight well, hey we got a heck of a crew here tonight the gang's back together again and the gang is back together first and ten for the Lions and they have lined up they had a man who lined up offside all right, Thomas in a shotgun. He's going to throw complete on a little bubble screen on the far side. And uh, they're going to do that play until Darlington brings people up, and then they're going to go over the top. 
want to remind everybody to stay tuned after tonight's game for the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of, of the game. And I do want to mention, Steve, that I was talking to my wife earlier today, and they have some new specials that they're going to unveil for breakfast, I believe, starting tomorrow. All right. And some of them sound pretty darn All nice. All right. Well, I hope you can tell us what some of them are. Are they a uh, secret about it? York and I were talking about going to Honeymoon Bakery for breakfast ourselves. So second down and about six, Darlington the extra down lineman and they run a wildcat and oh somebody shot in from behind him almost tackled him behind the line of scrimmage but it slowed him down and he's going to gain maybe a couple out to the 25 and Christian Heritage will have third down and about three. Now Darlington really needs to find a way to get a stop here because of course you had a score on a methodical drive from Christian Heritage then they forced Darlington to punt all the momentum is on Christian Heritage side right now Darlington has to put a stop to that all right third down about two two and a half the line to make is just beyond the 27 and the balls on the 25 and we have Thomas in a uh, under center he's going to throw the option play and the man cuts inside and he is not going to get it Matt he looked like he might cut inside uh, and get the first down but he's going to be short by about a yard and a half and it'll be fourth down and about one and a half for the Lions and I think they're going to punt the football yeah I think that was Ethan Smith and he's more of their fullback and I have to say, Steve, that was a big stop for the defense, and you got to credit that young man. He kept the wheels turning. I thought he was going to get it, but what a great play by the defense. All right, Darlington trailing by seven with 4.17 to play here in the first quarter. Shelley and Wright, they are back for the Tigers to receive this punt. The Tigers are making sure they're aware that this could also be a fake with a fourth down and about one good snap. And this is going to be a line drive kick. It's going to go over Wright's head. Oh, my goodness. He should have. Wow. 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 Disastrous special teams play for Darlington because that ball rolled inside the 10-yard line. Wright did not field that football first big special teams mistake Darlington has made this year yeah you hate to see that because now you're pinned back inside the 10 and we'll see what happens but nonetheless this is a difficult spot here for the Darlington Tigers with the roll that was over a 65 yard punt wow for, wow. for the Eagles I mean the Lions so uh, Darlington's got to uh, now start putting together something uh, and you know, Matt, this is the first team we've played this year that is comparable in size to Darlington. And these safeties are very, very big. Big and fast. Brewster in a shotgun formation. Two wide outs to this side, one to the far side. Colin Rogers gets the ball. Colin Rogers, 30. Oh, no, he fumbled. No, he oh, I thought it. he got, did. Well, okay, he got it. So he has a first down, first carry of the night here for Rogers. Man, he just burst off the left side behind Tate Ratledge. And who is that over there with Tate on that side? Um, is that Luke Lewis? I'm trying to pick up his number, Steve. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. All right, Tate actually is not in. Ran a little counter play that time, Matt. And uh, Rogers gets out a gain of about five. Let's see where they're going to mark it just outside the 30-yard line. So uh, Tate Ratledge is not in, and one of the people up here in the press box, thankfully, yes. we get all the help we can get. Yeah, Rusty uh, Mansell from 24-7 Sports. All right, glad to have Rusty up here helping us out. Brewster in a shotgun formation, three wide outs to the near side. One to the far side. Colin Rogers goes in motion, and he's going to throw it out here. Colin Rogers. Oh, my goodness. He, he was juggling the ball, and it went off of his hand directly into the hands of one of the Lions, and now Christian Heritage will have the ball on a turnover. So right now, Darlington's making a lot of errors. They really are, and that was Evan Lester, and he's not eligible for the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game because he's on the opposing team. But he must have heard about it and thought that maybe he was because he's playing well tonight, Steve. Yeah, Griffin Brewster got it out there, and uh, Colin couldn't handle it, and it went off of his hands. And so the big, di the big question now is can the Tigers uh, hold the Lions out of the end zone here? All right, it's going to be first and ten 
for the Lions at the 31-yard line of the Tigers. Big turnover here with 2.47 to play in the first quarter. Thomas in a shotgun. He's looking to his left, fake pumps. He's got a man coming on him. He's going to throw the ball over the head of his intended receiver. And Frank Manning with coverage down there. And that's going to be second down and 10. And the receiver, by the way, was Gage Leonard, number six. And, you know, uh, Thomas held on to that ball for a long time. He had a man barreling down on him from his right uh, and threw the ball over the head of the intended receiver. Well, this is a difficult start to the first quarter, Steve. It sure is. It sure is. And, you know, uh, just some mental mistakes right now. I formation for the Lions, Thomas, under center. And he's going to hand the ball to the fullback coming, or the up back coming right through the line. And he's going to be down to about the 21-yard line, just a burst up the middle. And that's going to be a first down for the Lions. So right now the Tigers are on their heels. Yeah, Gage Leonard again on that play. On the previous play, he lined up and came out of the backfield and went towards the end zone. They threw a pass to him that play. They ran him up the middle, and he got the first down. All right, it's going to be first and 10 for the Lions at the 21-yard line of the Tigers. Lions take, trying to take advantage of a turnover. And, um, you know, that was the first interception thrown this year by Griffin Brewster, and it was off the hands of a receiver. I formation right out to either side. And Thomas, he is crushed, but he gets the pitch off. And it, uh, man who got the ball, the halfback, he gets down inside the 20, but he got absolutely pasted as he was getting rid of the ball, but it's going to be second down at about five. Yeah, decent pickup there for Christian Heritage, but great pursuit there by the defense. And at this point in time, they just have to do everything in their power to make sure that Christian Heritage doesn't go up 14 to nothing. Yeah, this is a big, big, um, big, big play. And, you know, first quarter, 1.30 to play here in the quarter. Darlington trailing by seven already. Two wide outs to the far side and one to the near side. And Christian Heritage has really smacked the Tigers in the mouth. Thomas giving signals. Eye formation. He's going to pitch it to the tail. And he is going to be dragged down. And that was Gil Maurer who dragged him down, Matt, as he tried to get some acceleration. And he gained a couple and it's going to be third down in about three. Yeah, great play by Gill. Like you mentioned, he kind of was able to grab him by the ankles and pull him down to the turf. So good job wrapping him up and a nice tackle there by Gill. And they got to get a couple more here. And right now, the Lions offensive line is really doing a very good job of opening up holes on the inside on the Darlington defense. Thomas under center, eye formation, two wide outs to the far side. Quick pitch to the tail. He's cut down. Boy, I don't know who that was that got up under him. Oh, that was Colin Rogers. Colin Rogers got up under him, cutting down Matt Short of the first down by a couple of yards. And let's see what the Lions decide to do. I'm thinking they're going to let this quarter run out and then they'll decide what they're going to do. But a great play by Colin Rogers. It really was. And if Darlington Steve can come up with a stop here, that is going to go a long way in terms of starting to get that momentum shift that they need because things have just not been going positively for them. They need some good things to happen, and a stop here would help that tremendously. All right, end of the first quarter here at Chris Hunter Stadium, a fast quarter, and we're going to send it up back to WLAQ for a 30-second break. Don't go away. All right, back at Jerry Sharp Field, Chris Hunter Stadium. We're getting ready to start the second quarter here. Tigers trail by seven, Matt. 
uh, three possessions for the Lions in the first quarter. They ran 17 plays, six for seven on passing four first downs. Darlington ran six plays. So that's a big difference uh, in the first quarter. And if you're a baseball fan, Darling, excuse me, um, uh, the Braves, they won three to nothing to tie their series. The Astros beat the Rays six to two. Matt, they've got such great pitching. Their starting pitching for Houston is so outstanding. And the Twins lead the Yankees one to nothing in game one of their series. In the bottom of the second at Yankee Stadium here, the Lions are going for a 30-yard field goal. And uh, we are going to start the second quarter with that. And Darlington rushed it, but they did not make it. And it's a 10 to nothing lead for the Lions. And Matt, Darlington really dodged a bullet there on that turnover, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, I really feel like in some ways, even though they got points out of that drive, to hold them to that field goal was a victory because the way they were moving the ball and have been throughout the night, it really felt like they were going to get a touchdown. So you just got to take that and build on it. And that was Joseph Dixon there with the field goal, and he handles their extra points as well, and that was a pretty good kick. Yeah, and, you know, something else, though, that was set up by the uh, special teams mistake letting a punt roll instead of fielding it and that ball had rolled down inside the 10 and uh, that was a that set up the field position so when the interception occurred uh, then uh, Christian Heritage didn't have far to go and they were able to put points on the board. Steve earlier today I found an article from the AJC well it wasn't really an article it was a list that was interesting and it was the highest margin of victory out of every classification and for class A private Darlington is number three at 31.6 and then Christian Heritage is right behind at 27.5 points margin yeah. of victory you know and you look at them these two teams are very very equal very similar very physical and the Lions now lead 10 to nothing on the road and the Tigers are going to have to uh, settle them down with a long drive, some kind of score here, and it's going to be a pooch kick. Oh, no! Wow. It came down to Frank Manning, and Frank Manning covers it up, and that ball came over the head of the first line, and then it bounced way up in the air, and by the time it came down to Frank, he got smeared, uh, but he held on to it, and the Tigers will scrimmage from their own 34. Well, I tell you what, two situations in a row in terms of the kickoffs, we've seen Christian Heritage try to do something kind of funky to try to catch the Darlington Tigers nap, and luckily it hasn't burned them yet, but that makes you hold your breath, doesn't it, Steve? It does, and Ch Jay Poe, he's pulling out all the stops right now uh, for his team to break this series stranglehold that the Tigers have, and Colin Rogers, he's going to run a wildcat, and he cuts it up inside. He's going to have a game of about two there's a lot of chattering going on right now you can tell by the nodding of the heads of the, some of the Christian Heritage defenders a gain of about two Darlington will have a second down and eight at their 36 yeah th this has become a rivalry matchup even though Darlington's won this game six times six and oh in the series history there have been some close games especially last year and these two teams do not like each other they do not. Th three wide outs to this side, one to the far side. Excuse me, two to the far side. Griffin Brewster, he's got the ball complete. Shelley on a screen. Shelley is going to be tackled by the linebacker, Matt. He stayed in the middle. It's a gain of about six, and the Tigers will have a third down and about one and a half. Yeah, third and uh, very short here, as you mentioned, and a good play there by the Darlington Tigers. Let's see if they can get a first down and move the change. And Steve, asking you shall receive. I just received the breakfast specials that will be taking place tomorrow. How do pumpkin pancakes sound to you? That sounds very delicious to it me. It does. It sounds wonderful to me. Pumpkin pancakes. All right, Darlington in a power eye formation. Colin Rogers. Colin Rogers burst through and over midfield. Boy, Darlington is really, really uh, saying, okay, we're going to hit you in the mouth, too. Davis Watson was running downfield blocking, and the Tigers hurry up. Power eye formation, first and 10 at the 48-yard line of the Lions. Colin Rogers bursts off the left side and lowers his shoulder. And he's going to be down inside the 40 in the Christian Heritage tackle. I believe that was Evan Hood. He is a freshman, Matt. He is tall. The Tigers starting to move now, and they're basically saying, 
Well, you think you can do it? We can too. And Kay Brock was in there at the fullback position. Matt, did you see the hippo formation that Wisconsin ran a couple of weeks ago against Michigan? I didn't see it. They had eight offensive linemen in the formation. They had six on the line of scrimmage with a tight end and two offensive linemen in the backfield to block. We have a timeout on the field by the Lions here. And if you're just joining us, the Lions are up 10 to nothing. But Darlington has finally started to show some life of just saying, hey, you're going to smack us in the mouth, we're going to smack you in the mouth back. And I think that's one of the things that makes this team special is they have a variety of different things that they can do. And earlier they were trying to spread things out a little bit and just things weren't going well. They turn the ball over and this game has turned into a physical game and this team can play that style of football they won a lot of games doing it last year and here they come back throwing a counter punch and let's see if they can get it down the field and punch it in homecoming at darlington tonight my daughters down here 20th class reunion <laughs> i can't believe that but a lot of people in the stands tonight a good crowd for this game i thought there'd be more christian heritage fans down here tonight with this game having the implications that it does but uh, Darlington with a good crowd Griffin Brewster in a shotgun formation two wide outs to either side now Tyler Watkins comes running in Colin Rogers getting a spell on the sideline it's going to be complete to Patrick Shelley same thing all right you can throw bubble screens we can throw them too Shelley completes the uh, run down to the 31-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. And it's going to be second down, Matt, in about three or four. Definitely, and, you know, one of the things that I've heard people referring to this Christian Heritage defense as as bad company defense, and they've only given up five points a game. If you look at the course of the season, they've pay, played outstanding, and so Darlington's going to have to work really hard to be able to score on this team, but right now they're putting together a solid drive. Two wide outs to either side. Tyler Watkins in the backfield. Griffin Brewster, he's in the shotgun formation. He's taking the snap, handing it to Tyler Watkins. Tyler Watkins lowers his shoulder, and he is still on his feet. He's down to the 25-yard line, and that'll be a first down for the Darlington Tigers. Yep, and you're seeing a little bit of pushing and shoving going on in this game already. These guys are getting after it. This is a, a fun atmosphere for a game. People are really into it tonight. Yeah, I was talking to Hunter. Manning before the game and he said you know this is just going to be an exciting football game and you know this is the way high school football is you got two great teams they want to get after each other all right Griffin Brewster hands off to Colin Rogers Colin Rogers picks his way forward into the inside the 25 down to about the 22 yard line And, Steve, we could say this every week, but this really feels like one of these games where Colin Rogers is going to have to have a special game in, for, in order for Darlington to be successful. You know, there's a point in football where your special players, somehow they just put a team on their back and carry them. And this may be the Colin Rogers game. You know, Tate, he is really fired up for this game. And we're running off the left side. Griffin Brewster going to throw the ball complete to Shelley again on a little uh, out route here. He's going to be tackled at about the 20-yard line. And right now, Darlington's doing a little dinging, and then they're doing some banging. Yeah, they really are, and they're in a situation here. We're already eight, got about 8.40 left here in the second quarter. It really feels like Darlington really needs to get a score right here and, and start to figure out how to score against this defense because so far it's just been very difficult throughout this game. Tigers have to come away with some points here on a big, long drive after Christian Heritage kicked a field goal. Here we go. Brewster looking to his left. Throws the ball complete to Gil Maurer. Gil Maurer still on his feet down inside the 10 to the 5-yard line. Matt, what a great route. And then Maurer caught that ball, lowered his shoulder, and he really rolled over one of the Christian Heritage defenders. Hey, Coach is going to be extra happy about that one, Steve. Not only did he make a great catch, but he got some yards after contact, as you mentioned, lowering his shoulder and got some extra out of that one. That was a big-time play. All right, Darlington, a power eye formation. Colin Rogers! Touchdown! Touchdown, Darlington! First touchdown of the night for the Tigers. There's a flag down, I believe. Let's see. Or the, the referee is talking to Brewster. Let's see. I'm trying to step. There it is in the middle of the field. 
Boy, Tommy Atha is not a happy person right now. And let's see what they what they call here. Tate Ratledge is pointing to uh, something in the end zone. And let's see, we ha we don't have any indication of what's going on. There's a uh, uh, little towel that belongs to Rogers in the end zone. Boy, this is uh, this is a big penalty for Darlington. Wow. Here's the call. Uh, two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties against Darlington. Holy cow. That moved the ball back to the 25-yard line from the five. I, was there two penalties? Let's ask our helpers up here. Everybody's trying to sort it out up here in the press box as... as as we are. So you go from first and goal at the five to first and goal at the 25. So there had to be a five yard penalty and then a um, 15 yard penalty on top of it. Brewster back to throw, looking downfield, throws complete to Patrick Shelley who's gonna be knocked out of bounds at the 12. And the Darlington fans are calling for a unsportsmanlike conduct or unnecessary roughness. Uh, as the man grabbed him and held him up as he went out of bounds with him. But that's going to be down at the 10. So it's going to be second and goal from the 10. Well, Steve, as physical as the game was last year and things that were going on, I am not surprised at all that we're seeing that sort of thing already. Brewster in a shotgun. Rodgers is the single setback. He's going to throw the ball complete to, um, to Patrick Shelley on a screen pass. And... Uh, he gets tackled at the eight, so the Tigers are going to have a third down and goal at the eight. A touchdown came off the board, Matt, so the Tigers have to get points here. Yeah, they really do, and again, it's a situation where the Tigers just have not had things go their way. They've had an uncharacteristic turnover. Then you had the penalties here that are potentially killing this drive. They've got to find a way to turn this thing around. They need to get the touchdown on this drive. All right, third and goal from the eight yard line. Let's see, uh, actually, yeah, maybe around the seven. Brewster in a shotgun, takes the ball, looks to his left. He's gonna run the ball. He's gonna be tackled short of the end zone. And it's gonna be fourth and goal for the Tigers at the four. So Tommy Eighth has got a decision to make. Do the Tigers take points with, with Brinson Sumner coming in or do the Tigers risk a fourth down and nothing? Man, that is, I think in some ways a tough call with the way this game has gone. And it looks like they're going to try to get, get the yards and get in the end zone. So we'll see what happens. All right. We've got 6.33 to play here in the first half. Darlington trailing 10 to nothing. And the Tigers get the ball to start the second half. But, boy, this is a big, big situation. And Christian Heritage calls their second timeout of this drive so we'll send it back to WLAQ for a 30 second break and come back don't go away ladies and gentlemen keep those chin straps buckled we'll be right back All right, back at Jerry Sharp Field, Chris Hunter Stadium, Darlington, a fourth and goal at the four. The Tigers had a touchdown that was erased from the scoreboard on a double penalty, a five-yard penalty. We didn't see what that was, and then the Tigers were called on a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. So the Tigers had a touchdown erased. Now with fourth and goal and trailing by ten points, six and a half minutes left to play here in the first quarter, excuse me, the first half, the Tigers are going to go 
for this fourth and goal. They're going to snap it directly to Colin Rogers. Oh, oh what a beautiful play! Touchdown! Griffin Brewster, Patrick Shelley with a second touchdown pass of the year. They took the Wildcat. Rogers, Rogers pitches it to Patrick Shelley going in the opposite direction. Griffin Brewster out there, and the Tigers are on the board. What a great call by Brent Bell. Absolutely, and you know what? In, in this situation, you know that Tommy Atha and his coaching staff are going to have some wrinkles built in for a matchup like that. They called it the perfect time, executed it perfectly. Boom, you got a one-score game. And that's Patrick Shelley, second touchdown pass of the year. As I mentioned, ball's down. It's up. It's good, 10-7. to seven. Garlington now trails by three. And, Matt, that was a great drive, and the Tigers overcame having the points taken off the board. That is big boy football, and this is where the Tigers now have to come out and pay, play smash mouth on defense. Absolutely. I, you stole the words right out of my mouth. You come up with a play like that. You stun Christian Heritage. They thought they were going to get a stop right there on that particular drive. Now you got to come out on defense and just swing and just throw a massive punch right there and get a stop and then keep that momentum in your favor. That was a massive score. And you know, that is the play that the Eagles used in the Super Bowl to score on the uh, Patriots. The same kind of play and uh, you know, they came, they went one way and then came back to the back side and the quarterback was sitting there waiting for the pass for the touchdown. This is why you, you know. come out here on Friday nights to see stuff like that. That was fun. Yeah, and high school football is just so much fun because this is the kind of stuff that you get. And uh, great fans out here. Uh, they're really, really yelling on homecoming night here at the Darlington School in Rome, Georgia. Sumner ready to approach the ball. Toe meets leather, and it's going to be a high end over end kick. Going to come down to a man at the five. He drops it. It bounces right back up to him. He's trying to come up field on the near sideline. There's a flag on the field, Steve. Let's see what this is all about. Yeah, and then usually on a kickoff, it's going to be a, a penalty on the return team. And it's going to be a hold against Christian Heritage. So now the Lions are making some mistakes. And uh, Darlington certainly has made their share tonight already here in the first half. But this will mark the Lions back, and they will be scrimmaging from inside their 25. Well, Steve, I think that pretty much anybody that's analyzed this game throughout the week would not be surprised to see what we've seen here tonight. Maybe some of the mistakes you wouldn't expect, but in terms of teams just getting after each other and different exciting things through happening throughout the matchup, these are two well-coached, really, really good football teams. This is a heck of a game. Yeah, Jay Poe, he's a great coach, and they're typically very well-disciplined. Darlington, of course, we know about Tommy Atha. He's a great coach, 146 career victories for for Tommy Atha. Now Christian Heritage will scrimmage from their own 15 yard line. Thomas in a shotgun. He's going to throw the ball quickly out here complete to a man who's trying to come back to this side of the field. Darlington has him hemmed in. He's going to be tackled. There's also going to be a penalty down and I would suspect that's going to be a holding penalty or a block in the back against the Lions. And that will mark them back half the distance to the goal. Yeah, that's a big penalty help out, and you're right. Normally when you see it thrown in that area in that situation and a big hole opens up there on the side, you're going to see a holding or something of that nature, and they're picking up the flags right now. Darlington had a great defense from that, Matt. As soon as the receiver caught the ball, he realized there was no room running up field, and he ran back to the near side all the way to this side. But when that happens, that's when you usually have a uh, fertile ground for penalties. All right, now the lines will be marked back to about their seven and a half or eight yard line. Let's see it. And they're going to have a uh, first down. Let's see where they marked it to. Matt, they're at the nine. They're at the nine yard line. And thanks to our executive producer who's able to see that for us. All right, Thomas in a shotgun formation. Has one running back next to him. He's been in his end zone. He's looking back to his end. Darlington's got a man out there. Holy cow, great defense by Tristan Wright. He was with number 10, Evan Lester, the whole way and uh, had him covered like a blanket. Great play, and now it's going to be second down and about 16. 
Yeah, he ran a good route, but like you said, Tristan Wright with good defense and speed to get to his man and make sure that he was well covered on that play. And now you got a second down and long situation. So this is a great opportunity for Darlington's defense. Tigers trail 10 to 7. If you're just joining us, we got about five and a half minutes left here in the first half. Tigers get the ball to start the second half, which will be after homecoming festivities. Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game coming at the conclusion of tonight's game. Thomas, he's got Tate Ratledge on him. Tate finally, uh, he t escapes Tate's grasp, but by that time, help comes, and he's going to be tackled inside the 10 down at the 5. I think he lost a couple, and now Christian Heritage has third down and very long. Yeah, that's what you get with this Darlington team. Tate Ratledge set it up, and then you had two or three guys that came in to kind of clean it up and get that stop. And so another stop here, and you're going to have good field position. Let's see if they can get them on third down and force them to punt. Third and 20 for the Lions. They are at their own five-yard line. The line to make is the 25-yard line. Two costly penalties brought Christian Heritage right under the shadow of their goalpost. Thomas back to throw. He's looking downfield. He is going to be swamped. Another sack. A man comes in on the back side. I didn't see who that was, Matt. But the Tigers have put the Christian Heritage Lions down inside of their 10, and it's going to be fourth down and about 20 from their five. I'm pretty sure Dawson Williams was involved in that for the Darlington Tigers, and now they got to punt it out of their own end zone, and Darlington has all the momentum shifted back in their favor. All right, and we also want to say hello to Bob Berry. He is the press box announcer for the Darlington Tigers. He is under the weather. Bob, we miss you. We're praying for you, and we want to have you back as soon as possible. Get well. All right, now there's going to be a timeout on the field, and that is by the Lions. That's their last timeout, I think, of the half. And uh, so they've used three timeouts. So we have timeout on the field. Uh, Matt, you got any baseball scores? Uh, I can pull that up for you right quick. Yeah. And, uh, well, obviously everybody knows by now the Braves won three to nothing, even that series. They absolutely had to have that win today after what happened yesterday at SunTrust Park. You have Houston winning over Tampa Bay six to two. It's the Minnesota Twins over the Yankees right now. They're in the bottom of the third. And then you have Washington and L.A. not starting until 9.37 tonight. All right, and the Dodgers lead that series one game to nothing. I, you know, imagine trying to go up against the Astros with their starting pitching. You know, you got uh, Justin Verlander and Jarrett Cole. Yeah. You know, they got three first-line starters um, and Grinke, who they yeah. got during the year. So you've got three guys who are top-of-the-line starters for most rotations. All right. And here's a pun. It's going to be coming out of the end zone. It's going to be a line drive coming down to Tristan Wright. He's trying to run upfield. 30, 25, and he is going to be thrown out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And, Matt, that was exactly what the Darlington Tigers needed was Wright to get that ball and just run straight upfield with it. Great opportunity here, and Wright, as you mentioned, ran it straight upfield. But also you had Patrick Shelley with a nice block that kind of helped clear things out a little bit, give him a little extra room, and now Darlington has a golden opportunity to take the lead here before halftime if they can get something going. All right, it's going to be first and 10 on the near hash at the 26-yard line of the Lions. Darlington trailing 10-7, 341 to play here in the first half. The Tigers have their, all three of their timeouts left. The Lions have used their Colin Rogers. He is the single setback for Darlington. Griffin Brewster under center pitches to Rogers, throwing it to his left, and Colin Rogers, the old Green Bay sweep there. You pitch it to the guy, and he goes downfield, Matt, with blockers in front of him, and the Tigers right now seem to be saying, okay, we are uh, thankful you had your fun, but it is over, and we are about to grind you into mincemeat. Getting down to business, and, you know, you mentioned earlier that, of course, the opening kickoff was received by Christian Heritage, so Darlington gets it to start the second half. To grab the lead here if they can and have the ball to start the second half would be huge. All right, Colin Rogers, he's a single setback. He is going to take the ball, weaving his way in into deep part of the secondary of Christian Heritage. He's inside the five-yard line. Matt, he just weaved his way along, looked like 
a pro there. Colin Rogers busting the chops of the lines right now. You know, he might be wanting some pumpkin pancakes tomorrow at the Honeymoon Bakery, or perhaps he'd like to have some French toast with pecan pie filling topping or pumpkin chocolate chip French toast. I think I'm going to go camp out in front of the Honeymoon <laughs> Bakery tonight. Darlington trailing by three, but first and goal at the four of the Lions on the near hash. Three minutes to play here in the first half. Oh, Darlington is going to be called for illegal procedure. Boy, that is a big penalty by Aiden Langford. Yeah, and it's very, very tough to take when you have a situation here where you have a gift and a short field, and then you have a penalty like that, just a mental error, but they just have to move on to the next play. Yeah, you've got to just get that out of your mind, and then you've got to overcome it. And the Tigers did overcome a 20-yard penalty and a touchdown being taken off the board on the last drive to score a touchdown. So this is one of those things where you just reach down and say, okay, guys, let's go back and do it again. All right. Griffin Brewster in a shotgun. Rogers to his right. Two wideouts to the far side. One man on the wing on this side. He goes in motion. Patrick Shelley and Colin Rogers. He is going to be down inside the five, down to about the three. Good run off the right side, Matt. No question about it, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them go back to him on this next play and just see if they can get the rest of those yards and punch it in, but we'll see what they dial up. Yeah, I hear the train coming. <laughs> it's rolling down the hill. All right, here we go. Darling, Darlington trailing by three. Two and a half minutes left in the first half. Griffin Brewster will be under center. Colin Rogers, single setback. Power formation to the left. Colin Rogers, oh, he got smacked. He bounced off of a man, got down to the two. And, uh, boy, he got he took a lick. He, he really did, and he's one of those ones that when you see him coming, it makes you a little bit nervous because you know he's not afraid to take a hit. But he had two guys that put a lick on him right there near the end zone. Third and goal for Darlington. The ball is on the two. Tigers trail by three and I think that the thinking of Darlington right now is mano mano we're going to show you who's boss Christian Heritage bringing everybody up single setback is Rogers Griffin Brewster he does a quarterback sneak he is short he is down at about the half yard line Christian Heritage man comes out with the ball but the referees uh, they already called Brewster down so now the Tigers have a fourth and goal that penalty by Langford. They've got to overcome that, but the Tigers certainly can do it. 122 to play here in the first half. Tigers trail by three. The Darlington Tigers get the ball to start the second half. Tigers bringing in their uh, big power package, They're bringing in extra linemen. I haven't seen the hippo formation like Wisconsin ran, um, but uh, Cade Brock, Cade Brock is the fullback and Colin Rogers, one yard, one yard touchdown run with 57 seconds left, Matt, and the Tigers go up 13 to 10. Yeah, you mentioned Cade Brock. He was just in on that to get the little extra push they needed to get him into the end zone, work to perfection. Colin Rogers scores the touchdown, and the Darlington Tigers take the lead as we get ready for halftime in less than a minute. Maybe we'll call that our hippo formation. Tigers up by three. Sumner in for the point after. Perfect on the year. Frank Manning. He's going to hold. He is so good at holding the ball. Here we go. And here is the snap. It's down. It's up. It's through. Oh, and Darlington goes up 14 to 10 with 57 seconds left here in the first half. So we'll send it back to WLAQ for a quick 30 second break and then we'll come back for the rest of the first half. Don't go away. Hey man. We're back at Chris Hunter's team. Thus far, it's been slobber knocking out here 
for the Christian Heritage Lions and the Darlington Tigers. Brinson Sumner, toe meets leather, high end over end kick. It's going to come down to a man at seven. He drops it again. He's trying to get the ball, and he's going to run over to the far side, and he's going to be tackled right in the middle of the field, Matt, and uh, almost a disaster for the Lions. Uh, he led 10 to nothing, but the Tigers have clawed their way back into the game and into the lead. So with 49 seconds left, the Lions have no timeouts and they have the football. So I would not be shocked to see them just take a knee or run some kind of conservative play, but you gotta be aware of anything that they might do. Jay Pogue is ready to pull out all the stops. I would assume that Christian Heritage at this point, Steve, is just ready to get out of half. They've relinquished the lead, given up a couple of unanswered scores here to the Darlington Tigers, and they just kind of need to regroup right now because all the momentum's in Darlington's favor. All right, halftime coming up. Homecoming here at Darlington. Carson Swiger hopes to be here. And uh, Thomas, he takes the ball, and he just runs straight up field on a quarterback keeper, and he's going to have a game of a couple of yards. The clock continues to run. In fact, the clock didn't start. The clock did not start on the um, on the snap and the Christian Heritage coaches up here in the press box who were hooting and hollering a minute ago have glum expressions as they, they leave. Yeah, it's uh, definitely been all Darlington the last several minutes of this football game. It feels a lot different than it did a few minutes ago for sure. Thomas under center, I formation. He's going to drop back to pass. He is throwing the ball downfield, and it's going to be, oh, incomplete. What a great play. Boy, that's Kobe Nadu, I think. Yes, it is. Kobe Nadu. Kobe Nadu, and he just wrapped his arms around the uh, receiver as the ball came down. It's going to be incomplete. Third down and about seven with 12 seconds left to play here in the first half. And, of course, tonight after the game concludes, we want to invite you to tune in for the Rome Orthopedic Center High School Football Scoreboard Show. Yeah, then, uh, you know, that's always a jolly, jolly event. So tune in, uh, hand off to the fullback. He is going to be wrapped up. Uh, and that will be the final play of the first half. Dawson Williams back. He's had some trouble staying on the field this year because of injuries and sickness. And I tell you, glad to see him back tonight. And uh, that was a great play. Tigers go to the half up 14 to 10. So here's what we're doing. We're going to go to halftime for some commercial breaks in a minute. But in the meantime, you can look forward to statistics that we'll have at the half. We also will have homecoming festivities here. And as we continue to talk about college football's 150th anniversary, Matt and I aren't sure exactly what we're going to be talking about. But we'll have something that we can talk about about college football. The conversation, you never run out of things to talk about when it's football season, do you? And when it's college football, it's always interesting. You know, it's just such a ex great, exciting sport. So we're happy to have you with us. Keep those helmets on. You can unbuckle the chin straps for halftime. <laughs> but we're going to go to the WLAQ, Fort Darlington 14, Christian Heritage 10 at the half.
Ladies and Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Representing the freshman class, Sophie Shoemate. Sophie is the daughter of Kelly and Ben Harbin of Kingston, Georgia. She is escorted by Connor Brown. Connor is the son of Melinda and Stephen Brown of Rome, Georgia. Kate Scott. Kate is the daughter of Jennifer and Rylan Scott of Rome, Georgia. She is escorted by Percy Bauman. Percy is the son of Beatrice and Alf Bauman of Rhinebeck, Germany. Representing the sophomore class, Zoe Anderson. Zoe is the daughter of Lynn and Nicholas Anderson of Scotland. She is escorted by Vit Szymanski. Vit is the son of Iona and Cesare Szymanski of Poland. Lucy Altman. Lucy is the daughter of Caroline Altman of Rome, Georgia. She is escorted by Charlie Bell. Charlie is the son of Andrea and Brent Bell of Rome, Georgia. Representing the junior class, Madeline Bradshaw. Madeline is the daughter of Stephanie Bradshaw and Mark Bradshaw of Rome, Georgia. She is escorted by Lawson Brown. Lawson is the son of Melinda and Stephen Brown of Rome, Georgia. Grace Garlinghouse. Grace is the daughter of Cezanne Garlinghouse of Fayetteville, Arkansas, and John Garlinghouse of Fayetteville, Arkansas. She is escorted tonight by Stephen Yan. Stephen is the son of Ben and George Yu of Shanghai, China. L. Smith. L. is the daughter of Brenda and Wade Hoyt of Rome, Georgia, and Carter and Carrie Smith of Cartersville, Georgia. She is escorted by Owen Payne. Owen is the son of Danielle and Joshua Payne of Armerchi, Georgia. Maria Caputz Martinez. Maria is the daughter of Joaquin Caputz of Madrid, Spain. She is escorted by Sun Lee. Sun is the son of Hui and Ho Don of Haiphong, Vietnam. Representing the senior class, Camille Temple. Camille is the daughter of Cami and Bill Temple of Rome, Georgia. She is escorted by Anish Patel. Anish is the son of Nimsha and Bipin Patel of Cedartown. Casey Barnett. Casey is the daughter of Kim and Carrie Barnett of Cedartown, Georgia. She is escorted by Chandler Pittman. Chandler is the son of Joni and John Pittman of Rome, Georgia. Maymay Shaddy. Maymay is the daughter of Holly and Jarrett Shaddy of Rome, Georgia. She is escorted by Hampton Watkins. Hampton is the son of Sheila Watkins of Rome, Georgia, and Jeff Watkins of Cartersville, Georgia. Standing in for Hampton this evening is his father, Mr. Jeff Watkins. Gracie Temple. Gracie is the daughter of Cammie and Bill Temple of Rome, Georgia. She is escorted by Kobe Nadu. Kobe is the son of Jessica and Bruce Nadu of Rome, Georgia. Standing in for Kobe this evening is his father, Mr. Bruce Nadu. 
Megan Kilgora. Megan is the daughter of Jennifer and Chris Kilgora of Rome, Georgia. She is escorted by Carson Swagger. Carson is the son of Paige and Rick Swagger of Rome, Georgia. Marin Kinsey. Marin is the daughter of Christine and Bill Kinsey of Rome, Georgia. Frank is the son of Susie and Tommy Manning of Rome, Georgia. Standing in for Frank this evening is his father, Mr. Tommy Manning. Let's congratulate all of the members of this year's homecoming court. Tonight we are joined by the king and queen from last year's homecoming court, Annabelle Braden and Gabriel Zagula, who will be crowning our prince, princess, and king and queen. Annabelle and Gabriel are both freshmen at Kennesaw State University. This year's 2019 homecoming prince is Lawson Brown. The 2019 Homecoming Princess is L. Smith. The 2019 Homecoming King is Carson Swagger. And the 2019 Homecoming Queen is May May Shaddy. Congratulations to the 2019 Homecoming Court.
Well, we're back here at Chris Hunter Stadium, and the uh, uh, crowd is uh, still pretty big out on the sideline and on the uh, field out here at midfield. Darlington homecoming activities. Darlington up 14 to 10. If you're just joining us, and the Tigers fought back from a 10 nothing deficit to take the lead, and the Tigers get the ball to start the half. But, Matt, you know, talking about college football, 150th anniversary of college football. Right now, a college football game is going on. The top, and uh, that's uh, Central Florida leading Cincinnati three to nothing uh, uh, tonight. And then in baseball, the big news: Braves win three to nothing to even that series. And uh, that's not college football, but we just want to make sure everybody knows. Yeah, and obviously, you know, with WLAQ being the affiliate here in Rome of the Atlanta Braves, we will have the game for you on Sunday. That that series moves to St. Louis. And obviously everybody that follows Braves baseball knows that the Braves have not had the best history with St. Louis and the way the series started yesterday, it was good to get the monkey off the back and get a win today. And I, I know, you know, you had great pitching from Fulton Evich and then Freed came in again tonight. And then they brought in Melanson. And at the end of the game, the Ducks were on the pond and thankfully he was able to get get um, get through the game and, and get the win and not, you know, relinquish the win like he did last night. But man, uh, the Braves about give you a heart attack. They do, and, and uh, they needed that game tonight. If you go to St. Louis down two to nothing, uh, that's going to be tough sled in five game series. But Matt, you know, we, we talk about so many different things. There have been so many fantastic football coaches in college football over the years and you know their argument is always who is the greatest one and of course since that's a subjective thing you always say well is it going to be based on who won the most national championships who won the most games but the person who won the most games coached in one place for 60 years and he won 489 games and only lost 138. Wow. He won four national titles, 27 conference titles in the conference. He was in John Gallardi at St. John's uh, College in Minnesota. 27 conference championships. He almost It's almost that he won a conference championship once every two years. Wow. And what made Gallardi so different from other coaches is they never had physical contact in practices. They never tackled in practices. They would put people in the positions they were supposed to be in. They would run their plays. Um, if there were too many mosquitoes, they'd go inside and cancel practice. His uh, players always called him John. Somebody asked him about that one time. He said, well, that's my name. My name's John. Um, but he had exceptionally high standards. The players loved him, and uh, nobody was ever cut from the team. That was another thing 
that uh, made Gallardi special is if you came out for the team, then you were going to be a part of the team. And uh, in some of those games, the fifth, sixth, seventh strings got to play. Uh, but John Gallardi uh, with 489 victories in college football. And, Steve, one of the things that I, I think that's interesting when you get into conversations about who is the greatest coach of all time, who is the greatest player of all time in different sports, or whatever the case may be, is every era is different. The parameters are different in terms of the rules, the, how things are you know, handled in terms of recruiting and different things like that. And so for me, it's kind of hard to look at that situation and pull out certain numbers and say, this was it because there's so many differences when you look at different eras of football and so I would have to say coaching now I think it's pretty hard to argue that Nick Saban isn't the greatest coach in in years to have coached the game because of all the championships they've won and the consistency of that program every year but you know again comparing him to different eras and things like that that's always difficult I think well it is and you know a lot of people don't know that the way college football evolved was through the single platoon system and the uh, unlimited substitution system. Up until 1942, uh, college football players were limited in the number of times they could come into a game or off the field and be replaced. It was called the one platoon system. And that's one of the reasons why you did not have uh, the giant players or kickers that were specialized because you, whoever played had to play all the time. Then there was a period from 1943 to 1953 where there was unlimited substitution. Well, to 1952, there was unlimited substitution. Then teams went back. They, uh, the rules went back to one platoon football with limited substitution. And while it wasn't exactly like it was prior to 1942, it still was a completely different system than we have right now. So in 1964, when Alabama won the national championship, there was limited substitution. Their offensive tackles weighed 190 pounds. And, you know, you, you figured those guys had to play both sides. Running backs had to play. Uh, they had to play. Um, Defensive back that had to play, um, you know, linebacker. And one of the funniest things I've ever read was uh, was um, Paul Zimmerman's uh, observations about Don Hudson, the most famous receiver playing defense. And he played defensive end, and he said, I couldn't quite figure out exactly what kind of move he was making because it was obvious he wasn't really a great defensive player. So he'd kind of... A, He'd approach his guy and kind of turn around and trying to get around him. But as a receiver, in, a, in an age where they had no pass interference penalties, he was unparalleled. But they had to play both sides of the ball. So you were right about trying to compare teams and games uh, and coaches. It's very difficult because of the different eras. And, I mean, when you think of it in perspective of, like, baseball, for example, and we saw this, you know, last night with the Braves, how many pitchers did they run out there? Um, so back in the day when they didn't have the situation where you had a different pitcher to come out there and throw one pitch and then bring out another one to throw the next one and all those sorts of things, you know, you had a lot of guys that were pitching complete games, and sometimes you had guys that came out and pitched both games of a double header and things like that, and so very different throughout the years. One of the great things to do is to look at this date in baseball or this date in, uh, in football. But, you know, when you read them, they say, Cy Young pitched both ends of a double yeah. hair, you know, or the guy who pitched 16 innings of no hit ball and lost. Uh, and you see those things because those guys would, they might start, they might start 40 to 45 games a season and pitch uh, 20 complete games, you know. So, um, you know, Walter Johnson has 100 shutouts. That, but that that record will never be broken. Never. It will never be broken. Uh, and the number of complete games he has, I can't remember what the number is, that will never be broken. 
Yeah, because they just don't do that anymore. So it's um, it, comparing errors can be a difficult thing. And even like in situations like, for example, with basketball, when you look back in the 80s when you had the Celtics and the Lakers going after each other, those guys were out there on the court killing each other. And the officials didn't call the game back then like they would now in 2019. So those types of changes as well. Yeah, there, there are, and you know, the officiating and the officials have changed over the years, particularly in basketball and football because the game changed so much. But even with instant replay, when you look at how many calls they get right, it is stunning. It is. It is. It is stunning. Great officiating story, though, with a head coach in 1985 at Kiwanis Club down in Cordell, a guy came and he was a had been an SEC official from 1959 to 1984, and he had just retired. And uh, somebody was asking him about uh, one of the more interesting plays he had. And he said, "Well, we were down in Tuscaloosa playing at Denny Stadium, and uh, man caught the ball out of bounds. I was the back judge, and I ruled him out of bounds. Bear Bryant comes running down the sideline, waving his arms." and shouting and waving his fist and you know making signals about it and he got down to me <clears throat> and he's and i said coach you know he was out of bounds when he caught that ball he said and bryant just still waving his arms he says yeah i know and then he points at the stands and he says but they love it <laughs> so riding the officials wow great story about uh Bear Bryant. Okay, we'll be talking about college football <laughs> in a couple of weeks, but we got other business right now. Dixon's going to kick off the ball. Darlington will get the ball. Tigers will be going right to left on your radio dial. Thus far, on the Christian Heritage Kicks, they've done a line drive that went straight to a Darlington player, and then they did a pooch kick. So let's see what they do this time. Looks like they're going to do another uh, kick that's going to bounce. Darlington has it. A man. Oh, he broke past some of uh, the men in front of him. That's Patrick Shelley, I believe, and he's out to the 42-yard line. Wow. You know, and it's, it's interesting to watch them do this because I remember watching a special on television a few years ago about a high school team. I don't even know where they were, and they never would kick off to the opposing team. They would always kick an onside kick every single time. And it, this has been an interesting strategy to watch here with their kickoffs. Yes, it has. Darlington uh, has saved themselves twice. That one wasn't quite as, uh, as wacky. But Darlington first and 10 at their 41, up 14 to 10. And uh, Griffin Brewster going to hand off to Tristan Wright coming to this side on a speed sweep. And he's going to be uh, rolled out of bounds, if you will, by a host of Christian Heritage lines, but not until he gets a gain of four to the 45. And Steve, even though there's two full quarters left to play, with Darlington grabbing the lead with about a minute left to go, going into halftime, and then getting the ball to start this half, this really feels like a very important drive in context of how this game's going to go. If Darlington scores right here, um, that's going to go a long way, I think. Griffin Brewster in a shotgun. Christian Heritage bringing up an extra linebacker. They've been playing two deep safeties over the top with two cornerbacks kind of soft. Brewster hands off to Colin Rogers, and Colin Rogers is going to be tackled at the midfield stripe, and it's going to be third down and about one for Darlington. Yeah, they came out of the locker room, obviously, with a lot of energy. And as Coach would say, playing with a lot of enthusiasm. And they get a couple of big gains there on their first couple of downs and have third and short. All right, bringing in some big guys on that offensive line, making sure that they're going to have some beef in there. Darlington with a third down and short. And this would be a big conversion right here because it's very important to get off to a good start. Power I formation. Cade Brock is the fullback. Colin Rogers, and he has the first down. Boy, he got in there, and there was a mess. Not much running room there, but he got one yard, and the Tigers will have the first down. Well, we've already had a big sports day today here on WLAQ. We had the Braves. They won in the NLDS. And then tonight, after this game, ROC scoreboard show. But tomorrow, we have the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets taking on Mac Brown's UNC Tar Heels. Pre-game 2, 4 o'clock. And then after that, we'll go to CBS Sports Radio. A lot of sports this weekend on the radio. Yeah, and Mac Brown 
Boy, they almost beat Clemson last <laughs> week. You know, you, they lost to App State and then almost beat Clemson. So, you know, uh, North Carolina is one of those teams that's quite unpredictable thus far. Timeout on the field has been called uh, for a shoe to be tied. They did not. There they go. They've set the play clock again at 25 seconds. So Griffin Brewster... He's looking to the sideline. Tigers, now this is going to be, hey, we're going to hit you in the mouth. Come on, guys. Let's see if you can stop us. Brewster and a shotgun handing off to Colin Rogers, coming to the near side. Short side of the field, 45. And then he bangs somebody with his shoulder. And Colin Rogers, boy, he came out here, and he showed some speed to get into the corner. And it's going to be a gain, Matt. Of about six. Let's see where they mark it. And they have a lot of things they can do with him. They can run him up the middle. He has enough speed to get out to the edge, especially with getting some of the blocks he gets here from the line. And so let's see what they do on second down. All right, Tigers up 14 to 10. If you're just joining us early in the third quarter, Darlington got the ball to start the second half. The Tigers trying to drive down. They're not in any hurry whatsoever. It's just going to be let's see if we can milk the clock. And we can also run smash mouth football. Colin Rogers, 40, 35, 30, into the middle of the field. And he got tomahawked as he got inside the 25, Matt. And one of the Christian Heritage players, he is seeing stars. And he's going to be down at the 22. He just burst through a hole right behind Cade Block. And the Tigers are in business. First and 10 inside the 25 of the Lions. Brewster in a shotgun. Colin Rogers again. He weaves his way. 15, 10, 5. And he is going to be tackled inside the five yard line. First and goal for the Tigers at the two. And they're just handing the ball to the big guy now. And he's just taking chunks of yardage. And when you're running behind guys like Kobe Nadu, Tate Ratledge, Cade Brock, you got Aiden Langford in there, also Davis Watson. You're able to do that, Steve. Big holes being opened up by this offensive line. All right, I formation. It's Colin Rogers. He's the single setback. Brewster dropped the ball. He grabbed it on his knees, but he did recover it. That could have been a gigantic disaster for Darlington, but it's going to be second down and goal. Yeah. Ooh. Cool. Dodge the bullet there without question. Yeah, he never had that ball in his hands, and now we've got the big guys coming in again. And, uh, you know, let's see. Uh, yeah, Hampton Watkins comes off, and Tyler Watkins comes off, and the Tigers looks like they're going to go power package again. D.J. Johnson just ran out onto the field to join the linemen. All right, Cade Brock, he's the fullback. Brock, I formation, they go off the right side this time. Colin Rogers is in the end zone, never gets tackled. Another touchdown run for Colin Rogers, and Darlington now goes up 20 to 10, and Brinson Sumner can put the Darlington Tigers up by 11, but his second touchdown of the night, Matt. Absolutely. Colin Rogers has definitely been a force to be reckoned with in this football game, as he often is. And you know what we have to do at the end of the game, Steve? Award the, of course, Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game. Woo, pumpkin pancakes are calling tomorrow <laughs> morning at the Honeymoon Bakery. Balls down, up, through Griffin. And it's Brinson Sumner. He stays perfect for the season. So Darlington 21 Christian Heritage 10, but don't go away. This is going to go down to the wire tonight. We'll send it back to WLAQ for a 30-second message and be right back. Jerry Sharp Field at Chris Hunter Stadium for a big Region 6A match to two teams that are unbeaten. Darlington now third 21, 
Christian Heritage 10. Here comes Sumner. Toe meets leather. Oh, high, high. End over end kick comes down to a man who drops it again inside the three. He's coming straight up field. He's running to the far side. Darlington had a man cut inside. He got more yardage than it looked like he would get when all that started, Matt. But Darlington tackles him out of bounds, and I believe they will scrimmage from inside their 30. Let's see where they mark it. Actually, inside their 25. One of the things that amazes me most about what we've seen here tonight, Steve, is I think that's at least three times that we've seen a return man for Christian Heritage drop the ball and then get a pretty decent return. I'm surprised that one of those hasn't turned into an absolute disaster for them. If they keep that up, eventually it will. Yeah, you know, the old saying is if you keep playing with fire, it won't be long till you will eventually get burned. You that's know, the true. statistical odds start working against you. Uh, both teams are huddled up on their sideline. 25-second play clock has not started yet, and now Christian Heritage comes out. They will scrimmage from their own 24-yard line on the far hash. Uh, let's make it the 23-yard line to start their first possession of the second half. And one wide out to this side's far out being covered by Tristan Wright. I formation for Christian Thomas. He's going to hand the ball to the tail and he's into the Darlington secondary and he's now going to be tackled at about the 33 yard line but like Colin Rogers he just burst through that line Matt. And Hampton Watkins had a piece of that as well and you also had in pursuit uh, Hunter Man or excuse me Frank Manning. I don't know why I always want to mix those guys up. Hunter's been gone for a while but uh, a lot of guys getting in on the action. All right, D.J. Johnson comes on. Darlington putting a little more beef on the defensive line. Four down linemen with Luke Lewis, Cade Brock, D.J. Johnson, Tate Ratledge. I formation, Thomas under center. He's going to pitch it to the tail. Oh, he, I don't know who he ran into, but whoever it was, he immediately stopped. There was just nothing there, and I'm, that may have been Luke Lewis. Uh, he may have gotten a yard. Let's see. That was actually first down there. So he got uh, he got a half a yard. Man, he he just stopped. You're not kidding. When you got guys like Tate Ratledge and again, of course, Kobe Nadu out there, and and these big linemen for the Darlington Tigers, DJ Johnson's out there. I mean, they're going to wear you down as the game goes on. And Christian Harris's line's good, but my goodness, this line from Darlington. All right, second down and nine for the Lions at their own 34-yard line. Thomas comes to this side. He's looking downfield, and the ball is tipped by Hampton Watkins. Gets over his head, and that's going to be complete to, no, to J Tucker Jordan. And he is going to have a first down at about the 49-yard line. Make it midfield. The ball touches the midfield stripe. I have to say I'm very impressed with Christian Thomas. He has thrown the ball extremely well tonight. He really has. This is a very, very good football team. If Darlington's able to come away with a win here at home tonight and move their season to 6-0, and beating this team is going to be a major feather in their cap and accomplishment. All right, Thomas in a shotgun formation. Two wide outs to the far side. He is rolling to his left. Actually, this is going to be a wildcat. He ran deep because Gil Maurer got into the backfield, and he used his speed to gain about three yards, and that's going to be second and seven. So that was a wildcat formation. Evan Lester, the carrier there, and we've been calling his name a lot tonight. They like to get the ball in his hands in multiple ways, line him up as a wide receiver in the wildcat cat in that, that situation he's a pretty big kid and he can move he he can and you know Gil Maurer looked like he had great penetration and an opportunity to tackle him in the backfield and he used the speed to get to the outside second down and seven T Tigers up 21 to 10 at the halfway point of the third quarter Thomas rolling to this side he's going to throw the ball over the head of his intended receiver here on the near side that's Tucker Jordan and that's going to leave Christian Heritage with a third down and seven well glad you're with us tonight I do want to let everybody know we've talked about the Braves throughout the broadcast and how they've even things up with the Cardinals we'll have the game for you on Sunday game three 255 with airtime 410 will be first pitch on Sunday all right, and if you're listening closely, you're going to hear something like you're down at Mississippi State in Starkville, cowbells being rung by a lot of the Darlington fans. Third and seven for the Lions. 
Thompson, he's rolling to his right. He pump fakes. He's throwing the ball downfield. In and out of the hands from no Kobe Nadu, and that looked like that. Uh-oh. Now we got some penalty flags flying. I don't believe they called interference because uh, Nadu was the only one who could get to the ball. And let's see, the referee way down here, Matt, he's 30 yards from the play. He's the one who threw the flag. So let's watch it. It was a great play by Kobe Nadu. The ball bounced off of his hands. Looks like we may have a little meeting of the minds before we get the call here, Steve. Yeah, they're talking about it, but the referee who was within 10 yards of the play did not throw the flag. It was the one way down here. The linesman, 30 yards from, from the play, he's the one who threw the flag. So uh, I don't know if there was some jab jabbering going on, but he certainly couldn't have heard it. Well, so we, uh, we got a penalty flag down if the play stands and no yardage is marked off. The Tigers will have forced a fourth down on the lines, but if some quirky thing happens, Christian Heritage might get a first down. 5.50 to play here in the third quarter. Tigers up 21-10 to 10 if you're just joining us in a really good high school football game. A uh, great matchup tonight between two undefeated teams and two teams that have not lost in the region. Darlington, number four in the power rankings this week, and Christian Heritage, number five. Absolutely, and of course, you know, when we saw what happened last year with the game being decided in the fourth quarter, we knew that this game was going to be one of those matchups that you could circle at the beginning of the year as to be one of the tough ones. And it begins a very, very tough stretch for Darlington. There'll be a week off next week, but then you go up to Sam R. McCain at Trine, and then you have Bowden here, and then you go to North Cobb Christian. That team is very, very much improved, had a great year last year, maybe even better this year. And then you have the region crossover on the road, so tough stretch for the, the Tigers. Wow, they called a roughing the passing on Darlington. They called a pass interference on Darlington. Mm. Then they call, and the pass interference was declined, and then they called an unsportsmanlike conduct on Christian Heritage. So the roughing the passer is a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down, and then they will mark off the 15 yards against Christian Heritage, which puts the ball back where it was third down. Wow. So. That's a gift, though, for sure. It sure is. And I did not see the rough in the passer penalty flag till they had it down. And it's an eye formation handoff to the tail. He sidesteps a person. But, boy, Hampton Watkins had his position. And he was right there. He was right there when the running back got to him. And that's the way you respond when you have a penalty like that that gives some life to the opposing team's offense. You come out and you punch them in the mouth. You get a stop and, and play with a lot of energy, and that's exactly what Darlington did on that play. And that I don't think that was Hampton Watkins. I think it was Frank Manning, uh, which wouldn't shock me because from the, from the standpoint of just a mind for football, Frank Manning is up there at the top. He knows what's going on. All right, it's going to be second down and about seven and a half. And Thomas rolling to his left. He's got pressure. He's waving to a man. Oh, he's going to get a sack. Uh-oh, Darlington might be called for a man piling on. But Luke Lewis, when Thomas was trying to get away from him, he just fell down. Luke Lewis gets credit for a sack. And that's going to be a huge, huge loss back to the 46-yard line of the lines and now the line for them to make is the 37 of Darlington so Matt they've got 19 yards they actually have 21 yards what a way to respond of course you had new life on the rough and the passer penalty that you were talking about had a first down and now the defense has come up on two plays in a row and came up with big stops all right uh, let's see, it's going to be third and long. The line to make is the 37-yard line. Darlington playing two deep safeties. Thomas, he's going to throw the ball downfield. Oh, my goodness, what a great catch. What a, did he catch it? He caught it. It's a first down. He did it. I thought he caught it, but he jumped up acting like he'd been interfered with. But that is a first down. Wow. They made it to the 35. So that's a huge, huge play for the Lions. 
And we could look back as that being one of the biggest plays of the night. Yeah, and I tell you what, this crowd over here on the Darlington side just got real quiet after that play. They sure did. That was one of the Tigers. You, when you have somebody in third and that long, you've got to stop them. All right, Thomas in a shotgun. Format. I take that back. He's under center, and he's going to hand it to the tail on the I formation. And uh, he is going to be spun down once he gets to the 30. And I'm very impressed with, with their running backs. You know, they're very difficult to tackle. Yeah, that was Ethan Smith, and he is sort of their fullback. And he's just a strong kid, keeps the wheels turning. And this is a team that just keeps coming at you. You cannot let off the gas against this Christian Heritage team because they're coming. They are. And, boy, when you had them in third and – about 17, that was when you needed to stop them. Second down and about six. They're in the I formation. Two wide outs to this side, fake to the tail. They're going to throw the ball complete to a man going out of bounds. I thought he was juggling it as he went out of bounds, but that's going to be a first down at the 25-yard line. And uh, soft coverage over there, but Christian Heritage is now in scoring position. They're not in the red zone yet, but they're close to it. And that was Mr. Evan Lester again, the junior wide receiver for this Christian Heritage football team, making a nice play on the sidelines. Tigers up 21 to 10 here, getting late in the third quarter. Two wide outs to this side, one to the far side, eye formation. And Christian Thomas, the sophomore, he's under center. He's going to hand it to the fullback. And the fullback had a little bit of running room, but he's not going to get much. He'll be down to the 23, and it's going to be second and about eight. Interesting game here tonight at Chris Hunter Stadium. Fox 5 is here with their high five sports, and these two teams are not only battling for a big win in region play and to keep their undefeated season, they're also battling for the hand. The hand. The hand. <laughs> the trophy. The trophy. Uh, I missed something somewhere. Have you not You'll seen have to that with high five sports did. hand? Oh, well, I did see that. Now, okay, Thomas rolling to his right. He is looking downfield, and it's going to be almost intercepted by Hampton Watkins trying to sneak it over Watkins' head, and that ball was intended for number, uh, I thought it was 30, but oh no, that's number 10, Evan Lester, and now Darlington has Christian Heritage in a third down and eight. And we've talked about the tough road that Darlington has coming up. Same thing for Christian Heritage. They still have Try and Bowden, North Cobb Christian, and then they'll finish off with Gordon Lee before the crossover game. All right, DJ Johnson comes off the field. Frank Manning comes on three down linemen for the Tigers. One single setback for the Christian Heritage lines, and Thomas, he's going to throw the ball complete on a screen pass. The man who's going to get the first down and a little bit more. He's going to be inside the 15 down to about the 12, and the Lions convert another third down. Two minutes to play here in the third quarter. Yeah, I got the screen to Ethan Smith, and again, he's that big runner that they've been using a lot here throughout the night, and they got him a little space, and he's hard to pull down once he gets a little full head of steam going. All right, Tigers shuttling people on and off the field, trying to get linemen in, linebackers off, just trying to uh, get their defense set wide out to this side here, and there is only one safety on top. Thomas, he's rolling to this side. Oh, it's a... This is a wildcat formation, wasn't Thomas? It was a wildcat, and the man's going to be down inside the 10, down to the 5. It was Evan Lester again, Steve. Boy, he's got some speed and athleticism, and now the Darlington Tigers, they've got to stand up if they're going to keep Christian Heritage out of the end zone. Tigers up by 11 with about a minute left here in the third quarter. Both teams have all three timeouts here going to the fourth quarter but we've got the rest of the third quarter with Thomas in a shotgun formation he's talking to uh, his halfback here and now the Lions are going to have to call a timeout the play clock was running down so Matt 52 seconds left here in the third quarter we'll send it back to WLAQ for a quick 30 second break and then we'll come back don't go away
Steve Conrad, Matt Davis here bringing you a great classic high school football game. Darlington 21, Christian Heritage 10. 52 seconds left here in the third quarter, and Christian Heritage has a second down at the five-yard line of the Tigers. They can get a first down at about the one-and-a-half-yard line. We'll have some scores for you tonight after the conclusion of the game. The Room Orthopedic Center High School Football Scoreboard Show coming up a little later. All right. Right now, Thomas, he's in a shotgun. He is going to go inside. And that actually was Evan Lester. And uh, he took a Wildcat snap. He's going to be down to about the two. I don't think he has the first down. And that may be the last play of the third quarter. The Lions may decide that they're just going to let the clock run out. The play clock and the time for the quarter are about the same. Now it looks like they're going to come in. So this is a third down and about one for a first down and about two for a touchdown for the Lions. And they're doing the shotgun and the Wildcat again. He's running to the outside touchdown for the Lions. And that's going to be Evan... Lester and uh, now the Lions have closed the score to 21 to 16 and this might be a time for them to go for a two-point conversion I think they are looking at a two-point conversion to make it a three-point game the ball's put on the far hash yeah that is certainly the decision you think they would make in this situation Steve and I tell you when Darlington scored going into halftime then scored coming out of halftime it really felt like they were starting to kind of take control of the game but Christian Heritage said not so fast they're back yeah, in it they sure did and you know if I'm them I'm going to do that wildcat again because we we haven't stopped it we haven't stopped him all night, and that's exactly what it looks like they're doing. This is number 12, Evan Hood. I think it's the quarterback. Oh, is it? Yep. Is it number two? Yep, it is. And that is going to be incomplete. What a great play over there by Patrick Shelley. They tried to throw a little back shoulder over there, Matt, and Patrick Shelley just reached in front of him. And now with 6.2 seconds left here in the third quarter, Darlington is still up by four. Five. So, 21 to 16, 6.2 seconds left. And the Tigers, the Heritage, Christian Heritage Lions, this is exactly what we expected. It is, Steve, and, and you can't blame them for going for two. That's what they had to do in that situation. But obviously everything adds up in a game like this, and as close as it is, obviously that's pretty meaningful for the Darlington Tigers to get a stop there, and the score remains 21 to 16. Yeah, and you know, if they if Darlington kicks a field goal, it moves the uh, point differential to eight, which is more manageable. But still, you know, we, there's just uh, different things you're thinking about. Now, Christian Heritage Dixon has not kicked the ball deep once. He kicked it straight to number 16, Jackson Norris, who snatched it. He kicked a pooch kick that bounced around, and Frank Manning saved Darlington. And then he kicked another pooch kick that bounced around until Patrick Shelley got it and returned it to the 42. So, uh, this will be um, be interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting. By the way, neither both teams have only had one. Oh! I think Christian Heritage got that. I think it bounced off of Norris, and it was rolling around. And I think the Lions have it. The Lions came out with it. So they've stolen a possession. They sure have, and uh, so let's see. The referee still has not said who actually has the ball. Uh, Christian Heritage said they do, and he has signaled that that is the end of the quarter. And, well, wow. That's, that's a giant play. The uh, quarter has ended, so Darlington 21, the Lions 16, and uh, Darlington now has to start playing some defense. So uh, the referees are still chatting. Let's see what they're what they're deciding to do. 
There were 6.6 seconds left. And uh, no, no time is on the clock. So, all right, we're going to send it back to WLAQ for a 30-second break, and then we'll come back for the fourth quarter. Don't go away. First and ten for the Lions. Hand off to the tail, and he is going to be down inside the Darlington 40-yard line, down to the 39. And right now, the Tigers are on their heels, Matt. They really are. That was a big momentum shift, and we've seen them do that with a kickoff all night long, and you wondered if it was going to come up and burn the Tigers. And they've handled it well throughout the night, but that time it just bounced off of his chest, and Christian Heritage ended up with the ball. Second and one. Now Christian Heritage has the momentum. I formation. Thomas under center. Darlington bringing up uh, linebackers. And let's see what they're going to do. They're going to hand off to the tail. And he is going to have a first down. Not much running room there, but there is a first down. And that's going to be first and 10 for the Lions at the 38-yard line. And Tate Ratledge is coming off the field. He's a little gimpy, Steve. And let's see. Yep, first and 10 for the Lions. So with 11 minutes to play here in the football game, and the power in Northwest Georgia, football power, the pendulum is swinging back and forth now. Christian Heritage now in the driver's seat. They trail by five, but uh, Darlington hasn't been able to stop them, especially on that Wildcat and the third and 17 conversion. That was a huge, huge Converge. Oh, the ball snapped over. Thomas has head. He's got it. He's going to throw the ball downfield. Oh, caught it. wow. Caught it. Oh, my goodness. So, a two-yard gain, but, wow, Darlington had, you know, a chance. Thomas kept his kept his mind about him. He picked that ball up. It could have been a disaster. So, it's going to be second down and nine. Yeah, no question, man. And I think that's one of the things that shows you how much this team has matured over the last few years. We talked about in 2016 winning one game, 17, two games, then the seven games. This is a very, very good football team, and they're highly motivated. All right, Thomas in a shotgun formation. One wide out to the far side, two to the near side. He's looking to the right, and he throws the ball complete to a man who's hit immediately. It'll be third down and short. But uh, that was a great catch over there. And uh, Darlington had him, at, had him right as soon as he caught the ball. But it's going to be third down and about one and a half. Yeah, that was Kobe Nadu that came in and just really laid the wood down on him right there and stopped that from being a first down. That was a good play by him. All right, third down and one for the Lions. They trail by five with about nine and a half minutes left in the football game. And they're in control right now. They have the momentum. And uh, Thomas under center, I formation. Darlington bringing up extra people, and he's going to hand it to the tail, and he is going to be knocked down. He may have it. If he does, he doesn't have it by much, but you don't have to have it by much. No, you don't. And, man, this has been a, a game of just absolute tremendous momentum shifts. We saw the momentum in Darlington's favor there for a long time, and now it's back with Christian Heritage, and this has been a really interesting game of ebb and flow tonight. It has been, and when the Tigers went up 21-10 to 10, midway through the third quarter, I thought, well, Darlington's got control of the game, but the Lions basically drained eight and a half minutes off the clock and scored a touchdown and they converted several third down plays, and that's what they're doing right now. All right, 
First and 10 inside the 30 of Darlington. Quick pitch to a man coming to this side. He cuts inside, and he is tripped up. If he's not tripped up, then he's got a touchdown. It's going to be a first and 10 for the Lions inside the Darlington 20. Right now, Darlington's defense has no answers whatsoever for the Lions. Yeah, they've been out there for a long time, and of course, a lot of guys play both ways, obviously, for both of these football teams, but right now, Darlington certainly looks winded. They've got to find a way to dig deep right here because they absolutely have to have a stop. All right, first and 10 for the Lions. They trail by five with 8-10 left to play here in the football game. I Formation. Thomas, he's going to hand it to the fullback, and the fullback is stopped immediately by Cade Brock. I don't even think he got back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, great play by T Cade Brock, submarining in there, Matt. Absolutely. Cade Brock provided a little bit of spark there right there up front for the Darlington defense, and now they got to try to, you know, build from that spark and try to keep this defensive stand going and see if they can keep this Christian Heritage team out of the end zone and then get back out there and get down the field. All right, and if you're interested in college football, Cincinnati 5th, excuse me, Central Florida 15, Cincinnati 10 as the end of, at the uh, end of the second quarter. Thomas, he's rolling to his right. He's looking downfield. He is going to keep the ball and run inside the 15, and uh, he will have a gain of about four. Let's see where they mark it. And this will give Christian Heritage a third down in about seven. And that was good coverage there by the Darlington, of course, defensive backs there covering the wide receivers. The, the quarterback didn't feel like he had any decision but to run, and they were able to stop him up the middle. Yeah, Tate Ratledge coming back into the game. I, You know, if I was, if I was Christian Heritage, I'd be running that wildcat. We hadn't stopped it all night. Third down in about seven. Thomas in a shotgun formation, wide outs three to this side, but he's looking to his right now. He's going to run the ball, and he's going to be inside the 10 down to the five missed tackles, but that's going to be a first and goal for the Eagle, excuse me, the Lions. Boy, we had him, Matt. We had him at the... Uh, at the 12-yard line, and he got away, and he is going to be inside the uh, five. Let's see. Well, inside the seven, down to the six, and the Lions have run almost half the quarter off the clock. Yeah, and, and Steve, you mentioned it earlier. Once the Darlington Tigers had the ball to start the second half and went up 21 to 10, it really felt like they were in a situation where they were just going to methodically get through the rest of the game and win it. But this Christian Heritage team is so resilient, and they just keep coming at you. Yeah, they really do. And, you know, Darlington has only run nine plays or eight plays in the entire second half. Thomas, he's going to throw the ball complete touchdown. I can't see who that was, and that puts them up by six. I've got my eyes on him. Excuse me, that puts them up by one, 22 to 21. I can still see him, but he hadn't turned where he catch his number. Six-yard touchdown pass from Thomas. That was Evan Lester. Yeah, and they will definitely go for two. I should have just guessed it was Evan Lester, Steve. Yeah, he just ran a little uh, slant into the end zone, and uh, nobody was there. So they're going to go for two. 22-21 to 21 is the score here as the Tigers have uh, allowed Christian Heritage to get uh, ahead in the game. Thomas back to throw. He's going to throw the ball incomplete. Threw it too far to the outside, Matt. And now the Lions lead by one. 5.46 to play here in the football game. And, boy, we know what adventures the kickoffs have been. Yes, we do, Steve. Got to watch for that. And then with the missing of the two-point conversion there that, as you mentioned, keeps it a one-point game. So if Darlington can get it down the field, they could potentially win this game on a field goal. And you certainly like your chances on that with Sumner and how consistent he has been kicking the football. And so that's a, that is that could be big in the story of this game, missing that two-point conversion. All right. 546 to play in the football game. And the pendulum of power in Northwest Georgia football is swinging. Christian Heritage trying to grab it away from Darlington. Tigers lead the series six to nothing with a three-point victory last year. So uh, the Tigers have, uh, boy, that that turnover on the kickoff. That they they just stole a possession. And uh, 
If you're a baseball fan, Yankees and Twins tied up at three in the bottom of the fifth, but the Yankees have the bases loaded with one out, and the Dodgers and Nationals get started at 9.37 Eastern time. Well, that's a huge possession coming up here for the Tigers, but the first thing is secure that kickoff and don't lose the football. Yeah, they've got uh, Hampton Watkins over there now, and you got Tristan Wright. I think that's Tristan Wright on the far side. And... Uh, I see what Dixon does, but they have they have had funny kicks all night. They certainly haven't kicked it deep. So uh, we'll see. Here we go. Toe meets leather, and it's going to be a kick. Hampton Watkins grabs it, falls down, and the Tigers will have the ball at their own 44-yard line. So now is Darlington able to uh, put on the big boy pants and drive down the field with 5.43 to play in the game? Well, they're going to have to, Steve, and we'll see what happens. And, you know, again, on those situations with those kickoffs, obviously it can pay off for you, but at the same time it can go the other way. And here you've given a really high-powered offense a, a fairly short field here. They're almost at midfield before they run the first play. So let's see what Darlington's deep offense can do here. This is a very mature, experienced group, and so I think they can handle situations like this, but they got to get out there and execute their plays. Christian Heritage has run 24 plays in the second half to Darlington's eight. All right, Griffin Brewster, he's in a shotgun. Man in motions, Patrick Shelley. Colin Rogers runs off the right side. The linebacker comes up and spins him down after he gets out to about the 47 and a half yard line. That's going to be a gain of a couple. Yes, it is. Colin Rogers there on first down. Got a couple yards. Probably was. we're hoping they'd get a little bit more out of that first down play. A little bit behind schedule for the, where they want to be, but let's see what they can get out of the second down play. Second down and about eight. Tigers trail by one. 22 to 21 with five left here in the football game. Both Christian Heritage and Darlington trying to stay unbeaten. And uh, the Lions have stayed with their base defense. Two safeties deep and two cornerbacks deep. Griffin Brewster, he's going to throw the ball complete to Patrick Shelley on a screen pass. He's trying to get to the outside. He does, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds uh, after he picks up the first down at the 41-yard line. Great play by Brewster and Shelley. And this is an interesting spot here for the Tigers to be in. I'm real interested to see how they respond here, continue this drive, because since the Pepple game the first week of the season, they really haven't been challenged. I know they had that crazy game with Sonorville where Sonorville came back, but overall it's just been lopsided every single week. So this is a different scenario. It is, and the Tigers are not in a hurry. Play clock down to 19, and uh, they're looking over to the sideline and this is just one of those things you you got to hit people and smack them in the mouth first and 10 at the 41 yard line of the lines and Patrick Shelley he is looking to throw Darlington's going to get penalized for holding and they were trying to get the ball to Tristan Wright but Christian Heritage read it and it is holding against Darlington wow you cannot afford to have 10 yard penalties when you're in a close game like this now they tried to throw a wrinkle in there getting the ball back to Patrick Shelley but obviously with the play that occurred on Darlington's first touchdown of the game they saw uh, not a not the same play but also but a play in which Patrick Shelley got involved so the defense like you say they recognized it right away and were able to come up with a stop all right and this means you got to go deeper in your playbook because balls on the 45 yard line and the line to make mm -hmm. is the 31 yard line of the line so you know, I'm, I'm not sure how you go from first and 10 to first and and uh, basically 25 um, on a holding penalty, but that's exactly what's happened. Uh, so Darlington, you know, Tigers, that's a gigantic penalty. You got to overcome it. There's no choice. Play clock coming down. Snap it. Patrick Shelley, and he's going to get some of it back. He's going to be out to midfield, so the Tigers are going to have a second down and 19. Yeah, obviously they were not going to try to get all of it back on that one play, but they did hope by getting Patrick Shelley out into space, getting him some room, that he would be able to get more than he got. But the defense really pinned their ears back there, and that's a good stop there for Christian Heritage, holding them just to five yards. All right, the Tigers have to convert here. There's not much time left in this game, and Darlington's not in any hurry. So you can't give them the ball back. You have got to convert this into points somehow. 
Griffin Brewster. He's rolling to his right. He's looking downfield. He's got a man. Couldn't play to Tristan Wright. And Tristan Wright. That was a bullet. That was a bullet by Griffin Brewster. And Tristan Wright gets it to the 36. So now you have a manageable third and five. And that's what experienced, mature, talented teams do. When you have to have it, they execute a play that gets you in position. Now they got to turn around and do it again because they're in much better position right now, but they still have a third and long. This is a very big play in terms of the outcome of this game. Three minutes to play here in the football game. Tigers trail by one. They have the ball at the Christian Heritage 36. Third down and five. It's a big play. Darlington's got to get yardage here. You don't want to go to fourth and, and long. Six seconds left on the play clock. Griffin Brewster trying to get everybody in place and he's going to hand it to Colin Rogers. Colin Rogers 30! 25 and he is spun down by a man who grabs him and then wrestled to the ground by Michael McDade who comes up at the Tigers with a first and 10 in scoring position now and Matt that was big that was massive that was one of the biggest plays of the game and Colin Rogers comes up and gets a big play when you need him and got a good push up front by those big linemen and let's see if they can get it down the rest of the way and put this thing away yeah I know that Miss Evelyn listening down in Dublin would want Brinson not to have to be the one to win this game but I think he can do it but Darlington would like to run this clock down and get a touchdown Griffin Brewster in a shotgun, hands off to Colin Rogers, and he is going to be wrestled down as he leans inside the 20 down to the 19. That's going to be a gain of about four, and he really was wrestled down like a steer right then. Yeah, but All right. the Lions call a timeout. They've already called one in this half, so they've called the timeout now, and so we have a timeout on the field. Matt? just exactly what we expected absolutely two minutes to go and this game is anything but decided christian heritage up by a point and this has been an absolute heavyweight slugfest tonight at christian heritage it's the fox five high five sports game of the week you're going to get to see the highlights tonight on television this is a big night at chris hunter stadium it is and you know this is one of those things how many times have we had games like this that come down to the wire and you know, Darlington, that was a gigantic conversion after the holding penalty. Darlington then had to go back, and instead of having first and 10, you have first and 25, basically, and you've got to get a first down. And Colin Rogers picks up the yardage and uh, gets that first down uh, on third down and five. But the big play was Griffin Brewster on second down, firing a 14-yard uh, gain to Tristan Wright. Oh, yeah, absolutely had to have it. And, and in those big moments, that's when you see the, the players that separate themselves make plays like that. And that's one of the reasons why that kid's getting recruited so hard is because of plays like that. Two minutes to go in the football game. Lions down to one timeout, but they're up by one. Darlington with a second down and about six at the 19 of Christian Heritage. Colin Rogers breaks free. Colin Rogers gets in for a touchdown. Holy cow, what a great run by Colin Rogers. That's a 19-yard touchdown run. And the big guy takes the bacon down into the end zone, Matt. And the Tigers, the Tigers now go up. 27 to 22, and this is where the Tigers have to go for two. Absolutely, got to go for two here and make it a touchdown game, and we'll see what happens here. This is very, very big, Steve, because there's still two minutes on the clock, so this game is anything but decided right now. Yeah, it is, and uh, now Darlington calls a timeout, and wow, we don't want to go to a commercial break till after this, but this has just been a, uh, a great football game just a great football game and we talk about that but still you know you have to say it absolutely and I mean when we look at the way that you know Darlington throughout the season has handled opponents like Kusa and Gordon Lee and Mount Zion we knew that when you got to this stage of the season and the matchups that you have coming up starting with Christian Heritage that they were going to have to dig deeper in those games to come away with wins and they are responding right now but they have to get the two-point conversion here and then hold on defense still two minutes left to go in this football game um, a lot a lot of things can happen in two minutes in a high school football game absolutely and the way that Christian Thomas throws the football boy 
You almost wish Colin had taken a knee at the one. I know. <laughs> a lot of time left on that clock, Steve. There sure is. But, you know, this is where you got to come in and, um, you know, you Darlington needs this two-point conversion and then needs to play defense. Indeed. Well, here we go. All right. Tigers up by six. Five. five excuse me, five points with 154 to play here in the football game. 27 to 22. Darlington going to go for a two-point conversion here. Ball on the left hash. Griffin Brewster, he's up under center. And uh, Colin Rogers is back, and he's going to fake it to him. He's rolling to his right. Oh, he got it. He did get it. Hampton Watkins. Hampton Watkins leaned backwards, got the two-point conversion. Hampton Watkins good in for the honeymoon bakery icing on the cake player of the game because, man, he got the last onside kick, and then he got that ball. Hampton Watkins. And he was diving and caught it almost as he was on his back. I did not think he was going to get that, and he did. That was massive. What a great incredible. play by Hampton Watkins, and now the Tigers lead by seven, 29 to 22 with 154 to play here in the football game. And now the Tigers have to play some defense. They really do. This game is not over. They got the two point conversion. That was the first step here to trying to get this thing done. You absolutely had to have it. They made big plays. You go back and you were talking about Griffin Brewster on the situation with the big pass play that they absolutely had to have to keep the drive going. And then you get the touchdown with Colin Rogers and then the two point conversion and that isn't enough. You still got to come out here and get a stop on defense. Yeah, and we, we have not uh, had many breaks, but we also want to thank our sponsors. Of course, we have Avery Drugs. We have Ware Mechanical, Honeymoon Bakery. Uh, we don't want to leave anybody out. Courtesy but, uh, Ford, yeah. Floyd Medical Center, Harvin right. Clinic, Riverside Auto Group, Orm Orthopedic Center, Ware Mechanical. Yeah, so we thank you uh, for your sponsorship. Boy, we got a great game going here tonight. Brinson Sumner, he's going to kick off for Darlington. And here he goes. Toe meets leather. It's a high and over end kick. It's not going to be as deep as some others. Man takes it at the seven on the far sideline. And he is going to be knocked out of bounds. I think it looked like he was out of bounds. And then he kept running. So he's going to be knocked out of bounds. And now the, let's see what the Tigers can do on defense. First and 10 for the Lions at their own 22 yard line. Well, this is one of these situations where this has been a long game. I think everybody on both sides is probably pretty worn out. It's been a hot night, but this is one of those situations where you absolutely have to deep, dig deep as possibly you can and come up with stops here. Let's see if the Darlington Tigers can get this thing done. And, and, and if they do, I can't wait to watch the way this crowd reacts to the victory. Yeah, still 81 degrees. Uh, excuse me, 85 here. Chris Hunter team. Okay, two wide outs to this side. You got to know where Lester is all the time. Tom Thomas, he takes the ball off of the turf. Tate Rattledge is chasing him. He's going to throw the ball complete to Lester. And boy, they got a first down out of that. And, uh, you know, Tate Rattledge almost had Thomas in the backfield. But again, <laughs> Almost is only good in horseshoes and hand grenades. And you got to get that guy. You do. Christian Thomas is very elusive, and he keeps his feet moving, doesn't panic, finds guys that are open downfield, and he was able to do it there. It just blows your mind. 128 to play in the football game. Thomas in a shotgun. Three wide outs to the far side, two to the near side. He is going to have a man in his face, and he is going to throw the ball incomplete. That should be intentional grinding. Maybe somebody was in the area, but he had a man hanging on to him. I don't know if he was across the line of scrimmage, but I think that's the point Tommy Aita <laughs> is making, that uh, perhaps he was, but it's just going to go as an incomplete pass. So, 117 to play in the game. One timeout for the Lions, two for the Darlington Tigers. Tigers up by seven. So, Christian Heritage... The Lions trying to save themselves. Two wide outs to the far side with a tight end over here. Thomas, he's rolling to his right. Good block in there. He's going to throw the ball. Intercepted. 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 Frank Great. Manning. Frank Manning. Frank Manning. Frank Manning. Frank Manning. 
Peyton Manning. That'll do it right there. I can't say anything uh, else. <laughs> the honeymoon bakery icing on the cake player of the game is probably going to be Frank Manning. It might well be Brandon Watkins. But that may be the play that seals this victory for Darlington, and it's his third interception of the season. Well, that certainly would put the icing on the cake, Steve. That is unbelievable, and my goodness, I, I can't believe what we just saw right there. I really can't. Yeah, you know, Christian Heritage moved the ball, moved the ball, moved the ball. Darlington's defense, they're out of gas, tongues hanging out to the ground. They cannot contain Thomas. And, uh, boy, he throws the ball into a crowd, and Frank Manning comes up with the interception. And, uh, boy, that's great. Is it Frank or Tristan Wright? They're all over here. Congrats. I'm almost 100% sure it was Frank. Hey, call, call up to Dave upstairs who has the instant replay. See if he, uh, if he knows. Okay. Yeah. David Corbin doing our... Uh, uh, live stream and we sure need to make sure we know who made that uh, interception there but wow so we're gonna we're gonna find out they're congratulating Tristan Wright I don't know if that was because the right because Wright was in the area and they had good coverage I'm not sure what's going on I'm, done, I'm trying to double check, but I uh, thought I saw 14. Yeah, I did too. Griffin Brewster takes a knee, so 107 to play in the game, and the Lions call their final timeout. Matt, you know, this is just one of those things. Darlington about ready to go to 6-0. and And Frank Manning, he, he's coming over. Boy, they're congratulating him and congratulating each other. So let's. I'm waiting to get a response from my cinema text, but I'm I'm about 100% sure that's who that was. Yeah, well, we want to be sure because in a big game like this with pumpkin pancakes in the balance, we we want to be sure. Okay, Matt's going up to verify uh, who that was. We we think it was Frank Manning, but the. Uh, but our ability to see it, our executive producer and my grandson, York, who are up here, they are about to leave to beat the traffic and wildness. So it was Frank. Frank Manning, all right. So, wow. Frank Manning, third interception of the season for Frank Manning and uh, couldn't have come at a better time. The Tigers, with 106 to play, one minute and six seconds from defeating Christian Heritage, coming from behind Matt for the second year in a row, and Frank Manning made the big touchdown pass last year to put the Tigers up, and this year he intercepts the ball to quell a uh, insurrection on their part to come back and get seven points to tie the game. Yeah, I believe that Christian Heritage is going to be glad when he graduates, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they're, you know, they, they've just got to feel like they're rattlesnakes in their, their bag over there because uh, this will be the seventh straight victory Darlington has had. Student section being led by the cheerleaders in their Darlington alma mater. Another train is going by as this yeah, train is. Another train coming by. Two, 19 seconds left, Matt. It's been a long time since I've seen the Darlington fans like this. Cade Brock running over to the sideline. This game is just about to be history. And um, we, we offer our apologies to our uh, sponsors because we didn't have as many commercial breaks as we would have liked. But I tell you, uh, we had to stay here with the excitement. The game is over. Darlington, 29. The Lions of Christian Heritage, 22. We're going to come back to go over the game highlights in just a few minutes. But, wow, what a great victory as the Tigers go to 6-0. and Steve, that was a whale of a football game. That was so much fun. It was a whale of a football game by two outstanding teams. So, uh, But don't go away. We're going to come back for the, uh, the post-game show, and we're going to talk about the highlights of the game. Darlington, 29. Christian Heritage, 22. We'll be right back after these messages. Oh, wrong way.
That was a good win, wasn't it? Well, I hope that y'all have gotten your breath. Uh, I'm just getting mine <laughs> back. Matt is just getting his back. Uh, and most of the Darlington fans are just getting their back. What, a, uh, what a, an incredible night for Darlington and Darlington football tonight at Chris Hunter Stadium where the Tigers uh, had to come from behind two separate occasions to beat the Lions of Christian Heritage. And um, as we look out on the field, of course, the, uh, the gathering of the players, the gathering of family members and Darlington fans, and of course, Carson Swiger, uh, beloved by the Darlington community, makes his appearance tonight at homecoming, and uh, he uh, is crowned homecoming king, and uh, just a, a great night overall for the Darlington Tigers. Matt is working on some technical things, so as he's doing that, we're going to go through a few things uh, that we want to cover as we go into the halftime. This game was one of two uh, titans, if you will, just socking each other in the mouth, going back and forth. And uh, every time uh, somebody got socked in the mouth and wavered, then they came back and socked the other team in the mouth, and they wavered. But both teams stayed up for the whole uh, 15 rounds, if you will, and Darlington comes out on top of the lines of Christian Heritage, 29 to 22. The Tigers got down by 10 points in the first half when Christian Heritage took their opening kickoff downfield on a 58-yard drive, and uh, Thomas threw the ball to Lester on a 20-yard touchdown pass, and Dixon put up the point, and the Tigers trailed 7 to nothing. And then the Tigers gave up a field goal to Dixon after an interception. The ball went off of the hands of Colin Rogers into the hands of a defender for Christian Heritage. It set them up at the 31-yard line of Darlington. But the Tigers held and forced a field goal by Dixon, and that was a gigantic turning point in the game, the Tigers being able to quell the momentum of Christian Heritage after that uh, interception. It was, by the way, the first interception of the year for Griffin Brewster. Then in the second quarter, the Tigers finally got rolling on offense and uh, on a trick play inside the five-yard line, Patrick Shelley took a uh, pitch from Colin Rogers, who had taken the ball in a wildcat formation, and Shelley rolled to his right. Griffin Brewster was wide open in the end zone, a four-yard touchdown pass. Sumner put up uh, the point, and the Tigers uh, trailed 10-7. to Then a one-yard touchdown run by Colin Rogers, and Sumner put up at the point, and at the half, Darlington was up 14-10. to And it, then Darlington came out and had a nice touchdown drive to start the second half. Uh, it was capped off by a one-yard touchdown run by Colin Rogers, and, Dar and Sumner put up the point. The Tigers were up 21 to 10 at that point, and it looked like the Tigers had grabbed the momentum. Then Christian Heritage, though, came back on a, on a drive that took up almost the entire 8 minutes and 28 seconds that were left in the third quarter with six seconds left christian heritage scored on a three-yard run by lester but the two-point conversion was no good and the tigers led 21 to 
uh, 16. Then things got fun. Christian Heritage uh, did not kick deep the entire night. They kicked. Uh, they were kicking onside kicks, so they kicked one directly to a Darlington up man. The ball bounced off of his chest, and to start the second, uh, excuse me, the fourth quarter, Christian Heritage had the ball at their own 48-yard line. Then they drove down and had an eight-yard touchdown pass from Thomas to Lester. Um, they got a uh, touchdown, and there was a uh, two-point conversion attempt was no good, but at that point, the Lions led by one point. Then Darlington came back, and the Tigers had to overcome a holding penalty on a first down play that gave them second, excuse me, first down and 24, and Colin Rogers had a five-yard run, but then Griffin Brewster, he fires a bullet to Tristan Wright, to make it a manageable third down and five, and then Colin Rogers, he busts the ball into the uh, secondary of Christian Heritage, and then he would also grab the bacon and take it into the end zone for a 19-yard touchdown run, and uh, Darlington then had a two-point conversion, Brewster to Hampton, Hampton Watkins, and you know, Hampton Watkins, he made a spectacular play on that and an onside kick, Matt. Um, but uh, Frank Manning comes up with his third interception of the season. Frank Manning threw the touchdown pass to Casey Gunn last week, last year that gave Darlington the winning points over Christian Heritage. And this year, Frank Manning, he intercepts the pass that uh, shuts everything down, and the Darlington Tigers win 29-22. to And... Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game. I don't know if we could give two of them, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, Frank Manning, uh, he he is just one of those guys. Uh, he is the kind of person you always want on on your team because um, he he's not the flashy player that, that some players are. He doesn't get the gaudy statistics, and then you always realize he's in the right place. He's making the right play. He's got a football mind that is great and uh you know it's just amazing it is steve i think one of the things that really stands out to me about frank manning is the fact that no matter what his team and his coaches ask him to do he gets out there and delivers last year two games into the season he has to step up and be the starting quarterback throughout the season he helps take his team to the quarterfinals of the playoffs this year obviously griffin brewster back he's not in the starting quarterback role but he's doing a fantastic job playing defense we saw that here tonight and then also playing a significant role on the offensive side of the ball as well so no matter what frank manning is asked to do he comes out and contributes to this football team and so i think it's a certainly a great choice for him to win the honeymoon bakery icing on the cake player of the game tonight. Even though, Steve, there were a lot of different guys that certainly could have received the prize and certainly been deserving of it as well, Frank Manning always contributes to the success of this team week in, week out. He does, and, you know, um, th this is a great place for Darlington to get a break. The Tigers are off next week, and then we end up having to go up to Tryon, which is always a difficult place to play. I don't know uh, who Tryon was playing tonight. I know Christian Heritage plays Tryon next week. Uh, so Darlington will have that off week, but down in region play, and I don't, Bowden was tied 7-7, uh, to seven, I think, with Gordon Lee at one point. I don't mm -hmm. know if they uh, came back. They're the only other undefeated team in the, in the uh, region. But uh, I think Tryon was playing Mount Zion tonight, unless I'm badly mistaken. Okay. And they were kind of close early on. Yeah. So as we look at tonight's game, and, you know, one of the things, Matt, when you look at the statistics, Christian Heritage held the ball so long in the, the second half. Um, and so when you come back out here and you're just looking at the number, plays Darlington only had eight plays in the third quarter. Christian Heritage um, had uh, uh, 13 plays in the third quarter and made that third down uh, and uh, 17 uh, they converted 
So they, they moved the ball. It was just a great football game, though. Neither team gave up, and both teams have tremendous character. Oh, absolutely, Steve. And, of course, it was one of those games that as a fan of either team, I mean, obviously you'd much rather be on Darlington's side right now because they came away with the win. But you really know that being here tonight, you witness a really special football game. So it was a great night to, to get to be here and broadcast the game. And it's also a great night, uh, you know, for, for, for people to get the opportunity to be showcased on television vision with a high five sports and and i know that the the guys back in the studio randy davis and lynn butler there's some other good games tonight and i know they're chomping at the bit to get the Rome orthopedic center high school football football scoreboard show going because now it's after 10 o'clock so i know those guys are ready to roll yeah and and uh, they may turn into pumpkins in a little while but we're going to get <laughs> get this to them okay darlington a winner tonight in a wonderful high school football game tigers come back twice to defeat the Lions of Christian Heritage 29 to 22 the Tigers go to 6 and 0 3 and 0 in the region we will not be broadcasting next week but 2 weeks from tonight we will bring you the Darlington Tigers versus the Great Tryon Bulldogs from Tryon Georgia and uh, we want to thank our sponsors again uh, we, we wouldn't be able to broadcast these games uh, without that Matt we had a great game tonight and Darlington now uh, gets that chance to go up and uh, rest and then get another victory there's still a lot of great football to be played in this season absolutely Stephen always it's been a pleasure working with you and of course I know your uh, daughter is here today because of homecoming your grandson was up here with us a pleasure to get to meet him and also Gina was back with us tonight and she's the glue that holds this whole operation here together isn't she she is and i think you and i made uh fewer mistakes tonight <laughs> with a lot of the players and things and i'm thankful those gold numerals on those white jerseys are going somewhere else yeah these old eyes couldn't see them so. all right darlington 29 christian heritage 22 god bless you everyone we'll see you in two weeks when we bring you the great trying bulldogs versus the darlington tigers